welcome. I want to go ahead and kick off the Office of the Deputy Chair political report to the third plenary of the African People's Seventh Party Congress. The title of the overall ODC workshop is Our Economic Work is Revolutionary Work. Relentless 50 years of leadership, concentrating economic power for African redemption. After my political report, each department and institution of the Office of the Deputy Chair will make their report. Uh, first, before I get started, I want to thank each and every one of you for donating on yesterday to the Independent Africa Economy. And I want to let you know how much we raised on yesterday. If we can put that up, please. We raised a total of 165,151. So our goal is before this plenary ends, we wanna raise $170,000. So we're only short $4,839. So over the next two days, you can go to African people, APSPAhur.org and make your donation. Thank you. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with my political report. So I want to acknowledge my leadership, Chairman O'Malley Ishitela, and salute his political report to the third plenary of the seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party. I want to also acknowledge the African People's Socialist Party National Central Committee, members of the African People's Socialist Party, the African People's Solidarity Committee, the Uhura Movement, and our guests and observers in this historic plenary. I'm thrilled to bring to you this plenary, the vision and strategy from the Office of the Deputy Chair for concentrating economic power for African redemption. So in 2021, the Office of the Deputy Chair political report began with the chairman's mantra to seize, hold, and develop. In 2022, we want to start with the chairman's paper, Victory is Ours, Hesitation is betrayal. And I want to quote the chairman. We are living in an era where history is being condensed and conclusions previously taken decades and generations to apprehend are occurring within a matter of weeks and days. The party's theory of African internationalism anticipate the awakening of the masses of our people and the accommodating political and economic contradictions that are now responsible for the blistering pace of events that represents the crisis of imperialism resulting in the uneasy equilibrium threatening the viability of colonial capitalism that has dominated the world for the last several hundred years. For the last 50 of those years, the African People's Socialist Party has been busily at work organizing to bring forth the future. The party's economic work currently under the leadership of the deputy chair is designed to erode and negate the influence of the colonial capitalist system. When it is understood that colonialism is the underpinning of capitalism and capitalist production, the significance of our work can be better understood. All of our economic institutions and activities are designed to put ownership of production and the means of production in the hands of the working class through our party. This is the definition of socialism. This means we fight for socialism, even as we fight for power. We fight to undermine the authority of the colonial capitalism with our economic activity. We are undermining colonialism as the mode of production that has tied the entire world into one economy rooted in the attack on Africa and continues today. And that's a quote from the chairman. So we're gonna go ahead and go to another quote from the chairman. He states, every nation is based on an economic foundation. A liberated economy is the key to liberation of Africa and African people worldwide. The mission of the office of the deputy chair is to build economic development and commerce far and between African people worldwide. Our vision is to aid in the international struggle for African self-determination by educating and organizing Africans worldwide to take possession of our vast human and material resources of Africa and Africans for the benefit of our collective well-being, to create self-sustaining economic development with African workers and poor peasants as the primary producers and beneficiaries. 
The African People's Socialist Party Constitution mandates that the Office of the Deputy Chair create real economic development programs for the whole party. It must anticipate new expenses and plan for meeting the budget requirements of the whole party and its various programs. The Office of the Deputy Chair must teach all party organizations and cadre the principle of financial accountability and resource security. The party constitution states that this is one of the most important tasks of my office. The chairman has summed up. Now we are in an interesting uh, situation of deconstructing colonial capitalism. We have learned and, and we have learned and be prepared to see economic investments and resources directed at the political front. We have to understand just how important that is for protecting everything, not just protecting everything, but advancing everything. So in this period, we must invest in the political front in order to maintain our economic power. The power to govern. We are creating an economic infrastructure with centralized econ uh, economic leadership. We are exercising self-government and carrying out the party strategy of building economic institution for dual and contending power. As the chairman has stated, we have created institutions. People say that's capitalist because they created institution, but our strategy called for dual power, a power that negates the power and influence of the capitalist system and, the, and capitalism itself. We really pursue the strategy of dual power as a means of fighting against capital, capitalist colonialism. We take the struggle beyond protests and are actually constructing a liberated African economy with institutions that will continue to function as we take state power. The chairman describes the office of the deputy chair in this way, and I quote, this is an incredible, powerful part of constructing an actual government capacity. It becomes an incredible entity that is the resource, the mechanism, the apparatus for most of the economic activity to be defined in the party. All the lessons that we have to learn ultimately are going to come from being in this department. During a financial meeting with the ODC, the chairman urged, it is really important for people in this department not to see yourself as just raising money for this or that project. It is critical to see yourself as contributing to the actual functioning of a state entity, a state apparatus, the government. This is what we are constructing right now. The chairman said that there is much to learn from the courageous Vietnamese revolution but one thing that they were faced with along with Cuba and the Soviet Union and other revolutions is that they won the struggle for national liberation and then they learned overnight to function with state power. But we are doing in the African People's Socialist Party is coming to power in the process of capturing national liberation. We got to recognize that our economic work is revolutionary work. It's really, really revolutionary work. Our institutions are part of an anti-colonial movement that strives to replace and contend with the existing economic arrangements that exist in this country. If you can tamper effectively with the economic arrangements, you mess with the political arrangements as well. So the objective is to negate the authority and the influence of capitalism and colonialism in our lives. We are not waiting until the revolution is complete to govern. We are exercising self-government as part of the process of making the revolution with total liberation and unification for Africa and Africans globally. So we're gonna go to Black Star Industries. The mission of Black Star Industries is building economic development and commerce for and between pe African people worldwide. BSI is about African people coming together for Africans, meeting the needs of our, all of our people everywhere for prosperity, decent housing, health, and the ability to follow our aspirations to contribute to the development and well being of our people and our society. Black Star Industries is the 21st century Garveyism. 
Black Star Industry is the economic vision and institution created by African People's Socialist Party Chairman Omali Ishitela as the key instrument for developing our own independent anti-colonial economy. Marcus Garvey built the United Negro Improvement Association, UNIA, that boosted millions of, uh, of members around the world in the 1920s. With the slogan, African for African, those at home, those abroad, the UNIA created the visionary Black Star Line, a, a steamship line along with hundreds of African-owned businesses, including laundries and radio, um, radio studios. Chairman Omali Ishitela has developed and carried the, the Garvey's legacy by creating the theory of African internationalism and building many large successful Seferline economic institutions. Like Garvey institutions, these institutions are about self-determination and building a foundation for an independent Africa and Africa economy. Black Star Industries is the party's economic engine. Our goal is to create a multi-million dollar business with BSI subsidiaries, Uhura Foods and Pies, the Bernie Spear Media with the Bernie Spear newspapers and uh, publications and online presence is also part of Black Star Industries. The Africans One Billion Strong donor campaign wins every African to invest in the Black Star Industries as our collective future. It is an institution without walls that can reach the African world and all those throughout the world who support reparations and the return of the stolen resources of Africa to African people. BSI entities benefit the masses and help to bring them closer to the embrace of our party. The office of the deputy chair must be bold in its vision and competent in its ever expanding capacity. This is the office that must acquire the expertise to anticipate the emergence of an independent African economy growing out of the processes and programs of our party that are developing now as instrument of contending and dual international economic power. And the chairman quote is, there can be no self-determination without economic self-reliance. So I'm gonna skip over the Buy Black Power um, campaign uh, report because we're gonna be reporting on that very shortly. And we're gonna move down to um, page 11, at the top of page 11, I'm gonna talk about the African Independent Business Association, ANIBA. It's, it's, it is an association of African-owned businesses and institutions, enterprises and entrepreneurs as well as other businesses that support African self-determination and economic independence. We will build a NEBA out of the Black, Buy Black Power campaign. Under the slogan, Buy Black Power, we will deliver and promote economic power in the hands of the African working class, benefiting the entire community and contending with the welfare, economics, dependency and poverty imposed on us by oppressors. We will provide a business directory, jobs, workforce training programs, volunteer programs, and work experience for African people, especially for the working class and for the African people coming out of the colonial prison system. We will promote and win a policy for genuine economic development for the African community, as opposed to current government policies of police containment and mass imprisonment. We will enhance and grow the African revolutionary culture, art, music, commercial products, and, full pro and fully promote the creative, creative independent capacity of the African world. The Office of the Deputy Chair is committed to empower our organizations through business development training and accessible capital assistance through microloan programs. We will be providing business tools to remove barriers that hinders department of successful and sustainable projects. This entity is called Uhuru Wabingi. We have raised $33,000 for, for our movement organizations and departments to apply for startup loans to develop their own economic programs. This strengthens the whole entire organization by increasing resources and allowing the organizations to grow internally as well as externally. 
This project will be highlighted in 2023 and will feature all the party departments, including Agiprop, uh, all the party regions, organizational um, Department of Organization, APDEP, ANWO, NPDOM, USM, the Office of the Chair, the Office of the Deputy Chair, APSC, and ASI and Africa as well. This past year as the deputy chair, I was responsible for the economic entities of the party. I am self-critical for not being able to complete the 2021 mandate to build a garment factory in occupied Azania, known to most of us as South Africa. I began holding meetings with the comrades in Azania following the 2021 APSP plenary. Although the enthusiasm was there and the initial steps were taken, the main contradiction, however, was that the ASI leadership was not ready to take this on. The comrades did not carry out their action items or hold subcommittee meetings to work out details and plans, and they did not recruit others into this project. We, we do recognize the overall conditions and the lack of resources the comrades on the continent are facing. Um, our meetings were often challenged with no constant internet and no electricity. We have learned that certain infrastructure has to exist to build an economic institution. We need to invest in a whole house with electricity and internet for meetings and events to organize and recruit. We will tour locations to find the best place for this when we travel to Africa in our uh, 2023 for our Congress. The Office of the Deputy Chair is responsible to reestablish the culture of self-reliance within the ranks of our party and to teach the party how to constantly be in the process of resource regeneration as a matter of practice on a regular and consistent basis. The One Africa, One Nation Marketplace in Philadelphia held for 15 years by the African People's Education and Defense Fund and the Hoover Furniture Collectibles this past year, the APSP Northern Region has assumed leadership of this institution and economic self-reliance of the party's political work in the Northern Region. It was very successful and the region looks forward to building and growing in 2022 and beyond. Zenzile consignment, confident revolutionary style, just celebrated its five-year anniversary as a significant political, cultural, economic hub for the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project and the APSP Southern Region. The Office of the Deputy Chair carried out training programs to establish economic development entities for self-reliance of party organizations during 2020. The organization completed the mandates of the training in 2021. The International People's Democratic Uhura Movement created UZI, a threat of freedom, the African National Women's Organization established Decolonize as a revolution for your hair and body. Ahura Planet Revolutionary Apparel is the African People's Solidarity Committee Economic Development Project winning unity through reparations through its clothing line and products. All of these Black Star Industries subsidiaries sell at the marketplace, buy Black Power outlets and other venues. They go live and they have their own website. The Mighty Mighty Grants team, that's another report that we're going to get to in just a minute. So I'm not going to go through that for the sake of time. And we're going to go ahead and move to the Africans One Billion Strong Donor Campaign. The Africans One Billion Strong Donor Campaign is building a Black power economy through collective organization. The African People's Socialist Party is continuing to build an independent international African anti-economy begun by Marcus Garvey more than 100 years ago. When I assumed strategic leadership of the economic political front of the party in 2011, I branded the donor campaign, Africans One Billion Strong, building the economic foundation of the African nation. Although they have always been donors supporting the work of the party since, it, since its beginning. This branding put the strength of the entire African nation in the center. It exposed that it is the stolen resources of Africa that belongs to African people everywhere that's built colonial, colon, colonial capitalism. I made a plan of action to build the campaign into a real economic institution without walls with the ability to reach people from throughout the African world. 
Africans One Billion Strong call on the world to invest in the collective future of African people, taking power in our own hands, liberating our own land, our resources, and determining our own future for the benefit of Africans everywhere. We must pool our resources around the world to build our own Africa future based on the foundation of political and economic power over our own lives. As the chairman explains, and I quote, overwhelmingly, it has been the unity and support of African people in our struggle for liberation and the solidarity of our allies that have sustained our movement. It is a stand of reparations when white people donate in unity with the return of all of our stolen resources. The chairman led the push for the solidarity movement to take a campaign to go to the billions of dollars concentrated in the white ruling class corporations and social wealth handed down to the colonizer, the money sector. As the chairman explained during this time, the US crisis and retreat caused by the resistance of Africans and oppressed peoples, wealthy individuals and corporations are forced to confront the reckoning with white social wealth. Reparation is the only principle stands from the colonizer nation, many of whom are beginning to see their future in the liberation struggle of African and colonized peoples. APSC and USM launched the Reparation Legacy Project in 2020. During 2021, the Reparation Legacy Project held a national conference, contacted individuals, and attended events to influence those with social wealth to join the Reparation Legacy Project with major donations. USM also held a successful Giving Tuesday telethon to fund the Black Power Blueprint Community Control Basketball Court. Africans One Billion Strong is the party's umbrella to all donors to the all donors campaigns and participate in developing this new front. The relentless leadership of the party over the past 50 years have resulted in a qualitative leap in the number of donors and supporters coming to us from all over the world to all fronts of our movement. The Black Power Blueprint is particular has inspired the world to invest in the collective future of African people. There is an exciting dialectical process happening with all fronts of the party, developing and growing each other with the Black Power Blueprint at the center hub. AOBS donors, the Reparation Legacy Projects, our grants, the volunteers, and the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market. Black Power Blueprint tours in St. Louis have been instrumental in building and deepening this relationship. Donors are making larger contributions because people are seeing their future with the African revolution in this political period where people are still responding to the African resistance of the murder of George Floyd. We have reached, we have reached wealthier people and those in social wealth. They unite with our struggle to go beyond pro protests. The donor campaign and each movement organization and institution have been developed stronger because of the AOBS appreciation team, monthly meetings that they attend by representative in each area. The professional development and accountability to protocols and best practices for our donors that, that this has provided has increased our donor base and our donations. This process continues to in institutionalize our donor work. The primary goal is to build the infrastructure through a Huru NTU volunteer brigade to maximize this political period, to be able to win more and more donors, to get to know our, all of our donors and to steward them and to build a relationship to deepen their unity. By supporting the Africans One Big and Strong donor campaign, you can be a part of the future, not only for African people, for those, but for all of those seeking a world of justice and liberation in which all humanity can live in peace as one. And that's a quote from the chairman. So during the height of the COVID-19, our economic institution had to go come up with a new way of shopping for our products. The Office of the Deputy Chair introduced all of our economic institution to live sales shows. This way, this new way of shopping has increased sales and our customer base. It is an excellent promotional tool to bring customers into the stores 
the Ahura Furniture and Collectible Store shoppers and donors, now they host the live shows along with the staff members. And one of our supporters created a theme song. And you'll hear that theme song later in, um, in the report. So concentrating economic power for African redemption. In 1972, when chairman and organizers formed the African People's Socialist Party, they understood that self-reliance and self-determination were a necessity to carrying out the goal of liberation struggle. As we celebrate the 50 years anniversary, we salute the more than 50 thriving party institutions and programs for our economic development that are a part of the overall strategy for African liberation and, and redemption. As Chairman explains, there are people out there that are, that are making basketball courts, setting up kitchens, and who are selling this and that but they are not a part of the mission that we are a part of that defines us. We are doing, what we are doing is concentrating this power, concentrating this effort for liberation. The party's long history of economic development must be personally embraced by every member of our party and our entire movement. Every member of our party, wherever you are located, must participate in getting resources for the party. At local party events, we must put forward the economic work and collect resources that are returned to the national office. We need, to, we need to help people understand that our institutions are for our own liberation. We ask, do you wanna make a contribution to the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace? Do you wanna support the African doula project? Do you want to make a monthly donation? The Office of the Deputy Chair will provide promotional tools, outreach boards, brochures, donation can wraps, and methods to accept credit cards. And this is another quote from the chairman. And he says, while others are actually participating with the existing system by what they do, we are concentrating resources we get that makes our resource exponentially more powerful, more significant, and structurally incredibly destructive for the existing social system. Building the economic capacity of our party by building the office of the deputy chair. The office of the deputy chair is the vanguard leadership to navigate the colonial mode of production with African internationalism. This requires that we go to the people. The office of the deputy chair under the leadership of Chairman Amalia Chatella is participating in the APSP political bureau that leads the day-to-day -day work of the party to centralize all the work of the party and its mass organization departments and institutions under the direct leadership of the African People's Socialist Party Office of the Chair. The chairman has defined the main goal of everyone in the a APSP and all APSP organizations and every progressive thinking revolutionary to build the African People's Socialist Party. In terms of the economic development, this means the goal is to build the party's capacity for economic self-sufficiency. This defines the period to win every African in the world to build the African nation one and a half billion strong. As the chairman had also summed up, the party has been preparing for this period with the conditions in the world revealed that African internationalism is the solution. We have to build a revolutionary party, the advanced attachment of the African working class led by steel cadre guided by revolutionary theory. The office of the deputy chair has to continue to build new economic institutions and have strengthened and, providing, and provide training for cadre departments, organization, and existing institutions. So in 2022 and beyond is recruit, recruit, recruit. So despite all that we have built, our main focus still remains recruitment. We do not have the people needed to maximize the revolutionary period that the party has ushered in. Recruitment is uh, strategic in building the political and economic infra infrastructure of the party and transforming the economic conditions of the whole class. We urgently need to recruit to the party and the office of the deputy chair, but we also have the responsibility to maintain and build the many fully functioning institutions and donor campaigns that we have. Every one of our institutions are deeply rooted 
in the community with the capacity to grow exponentially. Our contradiction is having the people engaged in this process. Engaging the people in our number, engaging the people is our number one goal. Recruitment, utilizing our Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade Program. The ODC has trained movement departments and organization over the last eight years in the NTU Volunteer Brigade Program, which details manuals, workshops, and we also created grant manuals and held grant commission meetings and trainings. We created an Uhura Foods and Pies training manual and conducted a school to establish Uhura Foods and Pies in party regions. We created donor campaigns, the protocols, the policies and, and development strategies. We produced the One Africa, One Nation uh, market plate manuals for coordinators and vendors and held community trainings for market vendors. We, pro we provided extensive training and budgeting and department self-reliance, including, including property and office uh, acquisition. We, we provided training to prep professionalize thriving, viable businesses with a vision and a plan for large-scale production and international trade. We've offered our business contacts and vendors trainings and how to increase sales and websites and square merchant services. So now it is imperative that everyone use the science. The Office of the Deputy Chair must build the capacity of the Office of the Deputy Chair itself and the party's economic institution using a Huru NTU volunteer program. The success of our economic political work will be measured by the number of people we are engaging and training to various levels of team leadership. We need not just volunteers who can come for for specific events or activities, but we need to develop real team leaders and train coordinators. We need project manager level volunteers. We need to build relationships and political development for our volunteers to win them to deeper unity. Season territory institutions and programs and properties like Power Blueprint, a main goal coming from the chairman was to locate a building for the Hoor House in St. Louis as part of a longstanding goal for the party and the office of the deputy chair to reproduce what we have in every community where APSP is located. This is a part of the overall goal for self-government and building dual and continuing power. St. Louis projects conned as the Black Power Blueprint have almost all the elements of every organization and institution in our arsenal for completing the Black Revolution of the 1960s. The party landed full force in St. Louis in 2014, following the resistance of the African community to the, to the police murder of Mike Brown and immediately built organization. We positioned the International Office of the International People's Democratic Ahura Movement in St. Louis in 2017, I arrived to locate a building for the Uhura House. In four short years since then, we have created a beautiful renovated Uhura House with an Akaba Hall and office space for our organizations. We have secured the future Uhura Jiko Kitchen, Uhura Bakery Cafe, and future Africa Independence Workforce Program. We secured the land and built this state-of-the-art outdoor venue and community garden for the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market and outdoor activities. We secured an apartment building for housing participants of the, uh, of the workforce development program. We brought and developed land for a community controlled basketball court, land for the um, Black Power Square Retail Business Center and land for the African Women's Health Program. Although the Office of the Deputy Chair goal for 2017 was to build what we have and make what we have productive, we could not pass up this opportunity to make the chairman's vision a reality as he described in the 2017 plenary political report, putting revolution back on the agenda again. Africans must be influenced to combine with each other to begin grabbing up properties that have been abandoned and degraded in our community as part of the process of chasing us out, undermining property values, and opening the door to vultures from colonizing nation to easy, to easy cheap acquisition. The Black Power Blueprint is about the people. It's not just another campaign. 
the party has planted the red, black, and green flag on the hilltop in the center of the heart of imperialism. Missouri is surrounded by, uh, surrounded by eight states, drive from one end to another, the interstate inside of St. Louis, and you will see the signs branching out to Kansas City, East St. Louis, Chicago, Tulsa, Memphis, and more. We are establishing the Midwest front of the African People's Socialist Party as the African Revolution. This is why we have located our national office to St. Louis, Missouri. Another one of my go, uh, one of my mandates when I came to St. Louis in 2017 was to find a solidarity center. This past summer, Black Star Industries was able to acquire a beautiful building on the south side of St. Louis where our movement would extend the Black Power Blueprint into the white community and continue to win reparations for our projects. Continuing to meet the mandate to seize, hold, and develop during 2021, my office secured three additional properties in North St. Louis that are a part of our Black Power Blueprint. One is near the location of Ahua Jico. It can be a facility to, to develop our bakery and workforce development program. One is near the, the Ahura House and the other one is located in between those two locations. So coming up is uh, our spring explosion that's gonna be happening this spring. And I won't go into uh, a whole lot. I'll just read uh, a couple of things that's gonna be happening and, and I'll go into more details with another report. So come in the spring, we're gonna have the outdoor venue and the Gary Brooks Community Garden. And we also uh, gonna have the mural project going on. Uh, we're gonna have the Black Power Square retail, retail and business center uh, report. And also we're gonna um, talk about the Black Power Community Control Basketball Court, the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market. Uh, we are going to be relaunching the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market on uh, a weekly uh, beginning April of 2022 through October of 2022. Our fourplex apartment for the African Independent Workforce Program and the African Doula Project is also is on the table as well. Ahura Jiko Bakery and Cafe and Commercial Kitchen. Going to be talking about that. So, comrades, we are winning. If you look now, you see NBA uh, Stephen Curry on the left holding a Uhura sweet potato pie with Uhura Foods and Pies Vice President Bakri Olutunje in 2020. And I just want to say 50 years of leadership concentrating economic power for African redemption. And I really want to take a few minutes before we um, get into the Office of the Deputy Chair reports. I want to just acknowledge and salute um, the Black Power Blueprint Steering Committee. So we have uh, Western Region Bakri Olutunje, who's uh, represented in Hoover Foods and Pies. We have Northern Region Representative Tiffany Mur Murphy, who is represented in the One Africa, One Nation uh, Marketplace in Philadelphia. We have Chairwoman Penny Hess uh, with the Black Power Blueprint Promotions. We have uh, Kitty Riley, uh, the Black Power Blueprint AOBS we have Maureen Wagner on the grants and Ahura Foods and Pies. We have Janice Kent with AOBS and Ahura Foods and Pies in St. Pete. We have Abdul Alexander with the Black Power Blueprint. We have Afua Walla under economic development in Ghana. We have Ali Hutley at Ahura Foods and the Buy Black Buy Power Campaign. We have Allison Haney with Ahura Furniture and Collectibles. We have Bob Myers with Ahura Furniture and Collectibles and the Buy Black Power Campaign. We have Colette Harris out of uh, California who just joined the Office of the Deputy Chair. We have, of course, Kota with the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace. Janine with Ahura Foods, I mean, with Ahura Furniture and Collectibles. Casey Mackey with Black Power Blueprint Promotions. King L with Buy Black Power. King Gozi the, with the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace in Philly. Renee, uh, Ahura Furniture and Collectible and the AOBS donor campaign. Raya Fogarty with the Buy, Buy Black Power uh, Blueprint and Ahura into you. Ruby Gillison with Ahura Furniture and Collectibles. C. Ali Mulgary with Ahura Foods and Pies. Stephanie with Ahura Furniture and Collectibles and the into you. And we have Wendy Craig with the grants. 
And of course, we had Zanlile and Pico with the Black Power Blueprint and Ahura into you. So I just, again, want to celebrate uh, 50 years of leadership with concentrating economic power for African redemption. And I just want to salute the chairman, Omalia Shetela, again, and just say thank you for the 50 years that you have contributed to building African self-determination and economic development world, worldwide. Ahuru. So comrades, uh, that's my political report. Um, that report will be printed and each person who has registered for this plenary will get a copy of that. So uh, right now, what we want to do is we wanna go into uh, our office reports. And I wanna start with the first report, which will be um, the NTU Volunteer Brigade. This program is the center of 2022, building all of the ODC recruit, recruit. And we have um, Zanzili Mpiko, Abdul Muhammad. Uh, Raya would not be able to be with us, but I do wanna acknowledge all the work that Raya has done and, uh, and Stephanie M Mittler. Oh, comrades. I'm so excited to be here. I just want to get started with the report. Saluting and celebrating 50 years of relentless struggle, the Uhuru into You Volunteer Brigade report to the APSP Plannery 22 Plannery. <clears throat> Uhuru. Uhuru means freedom in Swahili. I bet that you didn't know that. So Uhuru, did you know that unyielding and unflinching and unpeaceful all means relentless? That is who we are. We are the Uhuru into you volunteer brigade. Volunteers are the heart and soul of this relentless brigade, bringing you our 2022 report to the plenary. Next slide. Next slide again, because I know I skipped the slide. Thank you. We are the moving vehicle for the Uru movement, our purpose and goal is to recruit from all over the world into all areas and organizations of the Uhuru movement in order to bring people's minds and talents and skills and abilities into political life. We carry out the practical and the political development programs right here in St. Louis, Missouri. All of our volunteers are the heart and soul of Under the Black Power Blueprint and the Uhuru movement. Black Power Blueprint builds economic development, meaning we build Black Power. We are the NTU Volunteer Brigade, recruiting into the Black Power Blueprint. Next slide, please. Uhuru. Uh, we salute Chairman Amali Yashatela for his relentless leadership and vision. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to salute the Chairman and the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Amali Yashatela, and to also salute the Deputy Chair, and my direct leadership, owner Zane Yashatella. We could not hope for two better leaders, teachers, and guides. Chairman Amali has striven relentlessly for over 50 years to overthrow the oppressive colonial capitalist system and to bring to fruition the quest for black liberation, African liberation, and black power. To this end, the chairman has established numerous economic and political institutions that are designed to attract, galvanize, and organize the masses. Thank you, Chairman Amali, for your hard work and dedication and relentlessness. Next slide. We salute Deputy Chair Ona Zanay Yashatella, founder of the Black Power Blueprint in St. Louis, as the director of the African People's Education and Defense Fund and creator of the Black Power Blueprint. Deputy Chair Ona Zanay Yashatella has overseen and directly participated in the continuation, resurrection, and revitalization of the party's economic institutions. The success of the Black Power Blueprint in the city of St. Louis is a testament to her tenacity, ingenuity, and genuine love for the people. Elsewhere in this report, you will hear the many economic projects headed by her office that have had and will continue to have a great economic impact in St. Louis and beyond. Thank you, Deputy Chair, for your relentless struggle to achieve Black power. Next slide. May I introduce to you the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade Steering Committee. Myself, Zan Lile, as the chair, uh, Abdullah as vice chair, project director, Stephanie, uh, salute, volu uh, volunteer recruitment uh, coordinator, Raya, salute, 
and Black Power Blueprint Projects uh, in charge of the projects of the tours, Kitty Riley. I want to salute my team. Uhuru. Uhuru. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uhuru. Our <laughs> recent volunteer, Tony, says this about being a volunteer. And there's some quote in our brother Huru. My name is Tony and I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. Going through the public school systems and being from areas where outsiders see, see are seen as a lost cause. I've always had I have always had passion to attempt to give back to the community, and I have achieved this over the years, but the work is endless. After volunteering at endless places around St. Louis and beyond, it has become a normal feeling for me. After graduating college and deciding to set up shop in St. Louis. I went on the search for an organization I can continue my efforts at, and I discovered the Black Power Blueprint, and a lot of the goals matched up with my personal goals. I then met profound members with the organization and started my journey as a member. I'm excited to see what we can achieve together and how we can grow overall. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this organization. That is powerful. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Uh, saluting our amazing volunteers. Here's volunteer Jeremy Jones and his appreciation uh, certificate because our volunteers are amazing. They bring something that we wouldn't necessarily have. They bring special skills, maybe for one day or a year or however long or short of a time it is. We appreciate them. This is a tribute to the party and the strength of the leadership uh, we as volunteers forward. Uh, next slide. We conducted an interview with Mr. Amir on why he volunteers with the Black Power Blueprint. Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade. First, now I'm quoting our brother Amir. He says, first of all, thank you for giving me this time. And of course, St. Louis is a very strategic place in the region in this country because of the injustice. We know that there's no reason for me to reiterate what's going on in St. Louis. Poverty, gentrification, all of that, and it's large corporations coming up and buying land. I feel like just working on a mission to at least familiarize myself with the pain that African Americans, black people have been seen over the years. It is very important then that I attend, I see, I talk to people, to black people, hear them, I see the problems they are facing, I learn something, then go out and see another person, I talk to them about it, and it's like this is how the message is spread out. So we thank this brother Amir for his powerful work, uh, volunteering with us in the garden. Next slide. Uhuru, volunteers over the years, 2017 to present. Since the founding of the Black Power Blueprint in St. Louis, Missouri, our volunteers have supported and participated in some of the most profound events, projects, and ceremonies through the years, even becoming members of this movement, which is the purpose of the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade. We salute Musa Abantu, long live. Next slide. Events like Black Power Poetry Night bring African skills, talents, and abilities into political life and also fill many other roles that the Uhuru movement utilizes and showcases for other projects. Like, next slide, demolishing or rehabbing buildings purchased by the Black Power Blueprint. Volunteers help pick up bricks, clean the rubbish, clean up at the fourplex, lay out plans for rehabbing, helping to furnish the apartments, and next slide, planting, grooming, and helping with the Gary Brooks Community Garden. Here are a few volunteers who have assisted with that project. Mikkel, Rebecca, Lady James, Deanna and Jim, Talia, Tina, Jeremy, Ash, Darian, and Becky. Next slide. Some groups, <clears throat> some groups even came out to get involved in this relentless work, engage and help transform the African community with productive work days and for short-term projects as well. The Gary Brooks Community Garden is an ongoing project through the spring, summer, and the fall. We salute all of you, Aaron Scholars Volunteer Group from Wash U, Tobias, Jacqueline, Coco, Jai, Muhammad, and Jordan. Even our smallest volunteers like four-year-old um, Ahmad got their hands dirty by cleaning up our beautiful garden. All of our volunteers are special. Thank you, Ahmad. Next slide, please. Some projects needed more focus and planning like the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market. This event was a fully staffed event of videographers, photographers, stage managers, project directors, vendor assistants, security, and so much more. Thank you to all of our volunteers for the culture and the vendors who came out to support the market. Even on the rainy days, 
That is why our volunteers, they are the heart and soul of what we do. Next slide, please. And our Halloween festival, we salute our parents and the youth as well who were volunteers for our Halloween market, which was a huge success. Our youth volunteers play a huge role in assisting the younger youth with games, registration for costume contests. They manned candy tables, crab tables, and toy booths. Also assisted in the streets for exercise games and with our famous street dance segments. It was definitely a Halloween thriller, LOL. Markets and workday projects like this is how the Uhuru MTU and the Black Power Blueprint unite Africans all around the world. This work is relentless and it must be done everywhere, not just in St. Louis. Next slide. Uhuru, we have many victories and advances. We are growing through recruitment from postings on volunteer match and LinkedIn, flyers and definitely word of mouth and collaboration. We now have a steering committee, which is a huge victory. We have held training with the steering committee and we'll hold future trainings on work with volunteers. We are holding orientations for new members every week and developing an updated PowerPoint presentation for our uh, orientations. And volunteers who are the heart and soul of our work are being appreciated and recognized for their work. Uh, next slide. Moving forward, our number one goal is to recruit, 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 continue to build the NTU committee. We need you. We need your time, your skills, and your special talents. No matter where you live, you can be part of NTU uh, Volunteer Uhuru, NTU Volunteer Brigade Committee. Sign up right now. Be part of the committee that is at the heart of everything we are doing. Go to blackpowerblueprint.org and click on the volunteer tab right now. The NTU committee has regular new volunteer orientations, and you can join to find out how you can fit in. Next slide. We need volunteers for Black Power Square, African Independence Workforce Program, African Women's Health Center, Community Basketball Court, Uhuru Jiko Community Co Commercial Kitchen, Bakery Cafe. Next slide. <clears throat> Specifically, we need graphic designers, project managers, videographers, photographers, grant writers. Together, everything is possible. Real people making history on the ground. Forwarding the African People's Education and Defense Funds, Black Power Blueprint projects from wherever you are, we need you. Next slide. Uh, moving forward to go to, we are going back to the basics, studying and carrying out all protocols. This includes, but it's not limited to, developing our recruitment strategies, holding the Uhuru NTU Remix event in March, and making sure that every volunteer gets an orientation before they volunteer. Uhuru. Next slide. Goal two also includes developing our appreciation and recognition portion of the Uhuru NTU program, including creating a space on the wall at Aquaba Hall where all pictures of all of our volunteers are displayed and carrying out the volunteer of the quarter program, including a gift certificate and the winner's name on a plaque that hangs on the wall at Aquaba Hall. Number two also includes developing the political education for all volunteers to participate in no matter what level they volunteer. This will include new PE for each week that is reviewed with all volunteers prior to their shift with the goal of deepening their understanding of dual and contending power and how the economic and political work together. The primary example being the Black Power Blueprint. Next slide. For goal three of moving forward, we will build the capacity of the Black Power Blueprint programs. By doing the work of recruiting, orientating, and appreciating our volunteers, we will continue to grow the capacity of the Black Power Blueprint programs. Next slide. Moving forward, goal number four. We are creating the Uhuru NTU culture, including the Uhuru NTU song and swag. The swag will include Uhuru NTU t-shirts, the Uhuru NTU newsletter, Uhuru NTU buttons, and we will create a budget to make this a reality through doing webinars, getting donors, and selling the swag to the whole Uhuru movement. Next slide. Here are the words to the Uhuru NTU song. And speaking of Uhuru NTU swag, here's our Uhuru NTU chair, Zamlile, singing the new Uhuru NTU song. Next slide and roll video. Uhuru, my name is Zamlile Pico chair of the NTU Volunteer Brigade, and I am bringing to you the Uhuru Volunteer Brigade song. So we say, 
is way late to thank you for everything you do thank you for fighting every day you are the heart and soul of this brigade and we say fighting for uhuru it is what this brigade do volunteers work hard to see it through thank you for all you do we cannot do it without a fight bringing you into Political life is why we strive a whole unite. Thank you for all you do. So we say is way late to a whole we want your freedom to our volunteers is everything we do. We are into you volunteer brigade. Thank you for everything you do. Uhuru. Uhuru. That's powerful. Uhuru. <laughs> Uhuru, next slide, please. Oh. Wow. Well, remember, volunteers are the heart and soul of the Uhuru movement. We cannot do this without you. So sign up today to be a part of this amazing Relentless Brigade at blackpowerblueprint.org. Uhuru. Uhuru. And that Uhuru. concludes our report to the 2022 APSP plenary. Right on. Uhuru, Uhuru, comrades. Thank you, Zanlile, uh, Abdul, and Stephanie for that great report. And I got to learn that song, girl, because that's so dope. And so we're going to bring up our next um, report, and that's going to be the um, Black Power Blueprint Promotions uh, Report led by Chairwoman Penny Hess. Uhuru. 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 Thank you so much, Deputy Chair Onis and Asia Tellen. Just from the Black Power Blueprint Promotions Committee, I salute this powerful third plenary of the African People's Socialist Party, 7th Congress. And I salute Chairman Omalia Shatella for 50 years of relentless leadership, winning African revolution. I salute Deputy Chair Onizene Shatella, who leads the Black Power Blueprint, the growing state apparatus of the liberated African workers' economy. And it is an honor to work under your leadership, Deputy Chair. And I salute that incredible political report you just gave. That was amazing. I salute Deputy Chair's relentless party-style leadership which expects nothing short of a cadre stand and the powerful office of deputy chair, which is huge and is inspiring. And it's a great honor to work under your leadership in the promotions committee. And we are working and fighting to reach more and more people worldwide in 2022. I salute comrade KC for our report, which is gonna be on video and to comrades Zanlile and Lisa, who are so much a part of the leadership of the promotions committee and comrade Kitty from the projects committee that gives us so much leadership. Uhuru, and you can start the video. The Black Power Blueprint Promotions Report to the Plenary of the African People's Socialist Party. Relentless, 50 years of leadership towards the African redemption. We salute our leadership, Chairman Omalia Shatella, the leader of the African nation, and Deputy Chair Ona Jenea Shatella, the visionary coordinator of the Black Power Blueprint. The promotions team is a part of the overall Black Power Blueprint projects under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Jenea Shatella. Our job is to expose the Black Power Blueprint to the world through the website, social media, live web events, newsletters, photography, and videos. We salute our team, promotions chair woman, Penny Hess, website and email newsletter coordinator, Lisa Watson, social media coordinators, Casey Mackey and Zanlile and Pico. We salute our amazing NTU volunteers, Ari, Ash, and Nick for their great video editing and photography skills, and Andrew for his work on the website. We salute Ella, 
Zoe, Leslie, Jess, Corey, and Danielle for their social media talents. 2021 went by in a flash with so much development of the Black Power Blueprint. In 2021, we coordinated six dynamic web shows featuring the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market, the Market Vendors, Black Farmers and Growers, and the Halloween event. We produced 22 email campaigns focusing on project updates and highlighting our volunteers. We promoted the farmers markets and our live webinars and provided business resources to our vendors. This year, our newsletter subscribers grew by 28%, something we want to increase by another 25% in 2022. Our team helped produce posters and flyers for the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market. Our social media team helped promote the farmers market on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We produced an updated Black Power Blueprint website this year. Salutes to Lisa and Andrew. We updated the Black Power Blueprint brochure. The projects are developing so fast. This year, we made social media advances. Our focus is on the three platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and this year we launched our TikTok. We worked to build our Instagram and have almost 2,000 followers. As always, we are working to build the Black Power Blueprint Facebook page. Please follow, like, and share our pages and posts. We salute the amazing and beautiful photography created by Ash and Ari. And we salute comrade Nick for our dynamic new Black Power Blueprint video. Check it out. So Black Power Blueprint means that, that I will not want everybody to enjoy and get a chance to see another side of North St. Louis. The Black Power Blueprint in North St. Louis was born following the police murder of Mike Brown in 2014. The Black Power Blueprint is testimony to the fact that Mike Brown and the hundreds of other Black people killed by the colonial police did not die in vain. The African People's Education and Defense Fund and Black Star Industries believe we must go beyond protest. We must build institutions of economic and political power in the hands of the Black working class community. In 2017, we initiated the Black Power Blueprint in North St. Louis under the bold and innovative leadership of Ona Zene Yeshitela, president of the African People's Education and Defense Fund, and we have already transformed our community. We purchased and renovated the Uhuru House at 4101 West Florissant Avenue, which was ready for use by early 2018. We bought two adjacent buildings down the street at College and West Florissant. In 2019, we demolished the corner building, which is slated to become a community basketball court. Even during the pandemic, we didn't miss a beat. And throughout the year 2020, we completed the stage in the outdoor space, installed a wrought iron fence, and then planted the garden. This is powerful because you're here. We completely renovated the fourplex apartment building on College Avenue that will provide housing for our African Independence Workforce Training Program for our brothers and sisters coming out of the prison system. We also demolished two other nearby buildings on West Florissant to make way for retail shops and contracted with the LRA for property designated for an African women's facility. In 2021, we installed an electronic sign on the side of the Uhuru House. We had a huge victory in June 2021 when we launched our One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market with a grant from the USDA. The initiative of the Black Power Blueprint has mobilized the North St. Louis African community and won supporters, volunteers, and donors from every part of the city and around the world. Some make donations as a stand of reparations to the African community. Right, Kylie? Yeah. Many community members have expressed what the Black Power Blueprint means to them. You see the money going back into the community. We want to build our neighborhoods to get our families back. Volunteer and donate at blackpowerblueprint.org.
our contradictions and mandates to overturn them in 2022? Contradiction. Our donor booklet is outdated, which is a good thing because of all the work done on the Black Power Blueprint. Our mandate is to produce a new donor booklet by the end of February. Contradiction. We need more volunteers, including a media coordinator, a project manager or secretary, social media strategists, content creators, newsletter volunteers, and website volunteers. Our mandate for 2022 is to build the NTU Volunteer Brigade and the promotions team and post on LinkedIn and volunteer match on a regular basis. One big mandate for the promotions team is to blast out on social media. We especially want to build our TikTok where we can currently reach the most people. Our mandate is to recruit content creators for TikTok and people to edit and post videos on a daily basis. We will also hold a monthly open social media team meeting. Another mandate is to build a media capacity to send out press releases and call the media for Black Power Blueprint events. We will also make NTU postings for media volunteers. Our final mandate is to continue to work with the Black Power Blueprint Projects Committee to promote the work days and help staff videographers, photographers, and volunteers. Join the promotions team at promotions at blackpowerblueprint.org. Can you hear me? Thank you for that Black Power Blueprint promotion report. And we're gonna keep it moving, comrades. Our next report is the Africans One Billion Strong Donor Campaign. And that's gonna be myself, Kitty Raleigh, Janice Kant, and Renee. If you guys can come on screen. And Kitty. Is Kitty on? There she is, Uhuru. Uhuru. All right. Well, Uhuru, Deputy Chair, thank you so much for that introduction. This is really a profound day of our plenary, and I just want to really open up by saluting the profound report that Deputy Chair gave to open up her department reports that was going to be instructive to all, a tremendous recruitment tool, lay out the foundation for how we have to move forward in this, in this coming period. That was just a brilliant report and I really, really appreciate it. It's an honor to participate in the Africans One Billion Strong Donor Campaign, building the economic foundation for African redemption. And an honor to present this report to the historic third plenary of the seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party. As deputy chair, Said, reporting on this campaign will be our political leadership, Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, and Steering Committee members Janice Kant and Renee Nassar and myself. We open up by saluting the profound and relentless leadership of Chairman, next slide. The profound and relentless leadership of Chairman Omalia Shatella. Wasn't yesterday and the day before just just profound. We so appreciate the leadership of the chairman, you know, and his report to this plenary as a guide for our work up until the Eighth Party Congress. 
We salute the chairman's political report, and I quote the chairman in terms of our AOBS, the party's long history of economic development must be personally embraced by every member of our party and our entire movement. Next slide. I profoundly salute the relentless leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela, that I have the honor of working directly under her leadership in the office of the Deputy Chair. Deputy Chair, I quote, the party has always had donors to the Uhuru movement. It's the second oldest institution. It was the deputy chair who brought science into the work and transformed it. Next slide. Deputy chair began to build the AOBS into a real economic institution without walls, with scientific systems and protocols, and a vision to reach the world. Deputy chair branded the donor campaign, Africans, one billion strong, building the economic foundation of the African nation. That put the collective strength and needs of the entire African nation at the center. Next slide. As Chairman Omalia Shetela has mandated for AOBS, Africans, one billion strong, calls on the world to, investigate, to invest in the collective future of African people, taking power into our own lives, liberating our land, our resources, and determining our own future for the benefit of Africans everywhere. Next slide. Yes, we are still affected by COVID-19 and continue to carry out the party's mantra, the people are everything. During the start of the colonial virus, Deputy Chair directed AOBS to go to the people, ask how they were doing and sent out a newsletter that let them know we are concerned with their family's health and give them more information from Black Ankh, APTE. Next slide. Here's the AOBS steering committee. Our leadership, Deputy Chair Onazene Ishtala, AOBS committee chair Kitty, vice chair myself, Janice, and leading the appreciations team is Renee. Next slide, please. Saluting the promotions and appreciation team representatives. Abdullah on promotions, Renee representing appreciations for Black Power Blueprint and Uhura Furniture Philadelphia. Amanda representing Uhura Solidarity Movement. Len, the Reparations Legacy Project. Myself for AOBS, APEDF and large donors. And Janine representing Uhura Furniture Oakland. And Raya is over our special recognitions. Next slide. We also salute the donor appreciation team volunteers from various institutions and campaigns. Here's Jamie, Amir, Sienna, Angie, Janet, Ron, Allie, Ruby, Mark, Jackson with the St. Louis mailing party there, Monica and Allie. Next slide. This is gonna be read by deputy chair. Yeah. Yeah. We probably need to just unmute uh, everybody that's given this presentation. Um, that way we can move forward, you know. So as Marcus Garvey did 100 years ago, we continue to build our own capacity to create an international economy, connecting the party and African workers from Azania to Europe to, to the Caribbean and storefront enterprises in African communities in the US and throughout the world. Next slide. Garvey's goal 100 years ago was to raise $4 billion from African people all over the world for the African Redemption Fund to set the race free industrially, socially, and politically. Next slide. The party sums up that the overwhelmingly, it has been the unity and support of the African people in our struggle for liberation and the solidarity of our allies that has sustained our movement. Next slide. And to this day, African workers from all walk of life contribute to building the economic foundation for African redemption. Next slide. 
Our party understands and wins that it is the stand of reparations when white people donate in unity with the return of all of our stolen resources. Next slide. Reparation is the only principle stand from the colonizer nation. Next slide. The chairman led the push for APSC and USM to go for the billions of dollars concentrated in the white ruling class, corporations and social wealth handed down to the colonizer. Next slide. Reparation Legacy Project was launched by the chairman in 2016 as the chairman explains, during the time of US crisis and retreat caused by the resistance of Africans and oppressed people Wealthy individuals and corporations are forced to confront and reckon with the white social wealth. Next slide. AOBS donor levels salute revolutionary leaders, African leaders giving levels allows everyone to, know, to donate to sustain the work of the African People's Socialist Party, Black Star Industries and the African People's Education and Defense Fund. Next slide. Qualitative leap we see in numbers of donors and donations is rooted in the party's 50 relentless years of leadership. The party opened many institutions and led campaigns that built support we still see today. Deputy Chair has developed, rebranded, and expanded, and they galvanize support from throughout the country. The Black Power Blueprint has inspired thousands to invest in the collective future of African people. The African working class seizing territory excites the imagination for the future. And donors see exactly where their donations are going to in the struggle for dual and contending power in North St. Louis. Here are just some of our- Yeah, they need to move the slide again. Pardon me? They need to move the slide. Next slide. Yeah, and the next one after this now. Black Power Blueprint led 12 tours in St. Louis in this past year that have been instrumental in building relationships. We've given tours to donors, to volunteers, to grant funders, and African farmers and growers, bank representatives, and organizations tied to social wealth have joined. Next slide. What we see is an exciting dialectical process happening with all fronts of the party developing and growing each other with the Black Power Blueprint as the central hub. For example, Mid uh, West Regional Representative Bakri presents at the Oakland Bay Area Food Funded Conference to get a Hurujiko St. Louis support. He wins a large donation from John, a former Oakland Uhuru Bakery customer from the 1980s. Next slide. John is invited to the Reparations Legacy Conference. He makes a large donation to the basketball court. Then he's interviewed on the Huru Solidarity Movement's Giving Tuesday Telethon and shares the workshop with a longtime supporter and significant donor and friend, Mark, also a former Uhuru Bakery customer in the 1980s. And they both donate again. Next slide. Another example is when USM representatives attended a social, social wealth conference. They met Solidaire Economy founder, Julia, who tours Black Power Blueprint and then introduces the movement to African urban farmer, Mitch, and to Square Inc. Mitch attends the One Africa, One Nation market and tours Black Power Blueprint, who donates food for the market distribution and hosts market reps on a tour for his urban farm school. He introduced the movement to other growers called Red Circle, Black Growers for Social Justice. And then Square sponsors the Halloween market, free vendor training sessions, and point of sale equipment for the Uhuru Furniture Stores. This is really powerful. Next slide. USM March for Reparations gets media article in the St. Louis Dispatch. A North County group of friends sees the article, then they bring donation checks for the basketball court to the One Africa, One Nation Halloween market, and they tour the Black Power Blueprint. Next slide. 
monthly AOBS tables with flags, berets, and other Black Star Industries buy Black Power products are set up at the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market. This exposes the community and vendors, cultural workers, and all attendees to Black Star Industries, the African People's Socialist Party, Uhuru Solidarity Movement, and Africans One Billion Strong. The local farmers are interviewed on Black Power Blueprint webinar, and one even comes to the party demonstration in defense of Haiti, deepening his unity. Next slide. We have broken into the moneyed sector. We see that white people are wealthier and social wealth has increased. For the past decade, for over the past decade, for example, the stock market grew by more than 300%. The average income of wealthy supporters of nonprofits has increased by more than 25%. So they have more to give. And new, US, and new US laws that are requiring foundations and family funds to disperse money annually in order to continue their tax exemptions has contributed to the Reparations Legacy Project, influencing and winning a new base of donors. Next slide. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising has expanded our network. For Giving Tuesday, many supporters set up their own GoFundMe teams and more USM members and contacts are holding annual Facebook birthday fundraisers that we can count on year after year. Next slide. We now have donors from 184 cities, 31 states, and four countries. We saw a 30% growth in the number of cities where our donors were located in the past year. This growth was concentrated in the party regions. You can see the larger circles on the map are in the Northeast, in the Oakland Bay area, in St. Louis and the Midwest, in the St. Pete area, and in the Northwest. Next slide. Our 2021 donation income increased by 63% over the year before. And after yesterday's outpouring of support, we can see that this year's increase will probably be even higher. People are turning away from the social system that is in complete crisis. They're beginning to see their future with African internationalism, 50 years of relentless leadership of the party. These new and larger donors are true supporters of our institutions and programs. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Our donors are giving larger amounts. We had 3,740 unique donors to AOBS, APEDF, and the Black Power Blueprint in 2021, plus hundreds more who drop money in the can or add donations to their Uhuru Foods credit card sales. Each year, we are sustaining a higher number of new donors. Now we must take up the challenge to get even more donors in all areas of the work. Next slide. Companies and farmers donating ingredients to Uhuru Pies have greatly increased also. We got thousands of pounds of sweet potatoes and pallets of quality flour donated, just as a few examples. We are better appreciating and stewarding these donors with personalized gifts and consistent communication year round. Next slide, please. Salute to the Uhuru Solidarity Movement and the Reparations Legacy Project. USM's 24-hour Giving Tuesday telethon broke all records and completed the $140,000 funding for the St. Louis Community Control Basketball Court. Ohuru. Next slide, please. Africans One Billion Strong is the party's umbrella to all donation campaigns. Ohuru Furniture Stores carried out a campaign at the sales desk and won the highest donations ever. We now get donor contact information so we can build a relationship. Many furniture donors are now donating funds to APDF programs. The furniture stores also carried out, a, a, carried out successful peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for Giving Tuesday. Next slide. Appreciating our donors and winning African internationalism is key to growing the movement. We send personalized thank you cards, phone calls, emails, and an e-newsletter. We acknowledge special life events, and we steward them with consistent communication on the progress of the projects they are supporting, with articles of interest to the donor, inviting them to webinars, studies, and events. Next slide. We introduce donor stewardship to build relationships, not just one-time thank yous. 
AOBS provided professional development for appreciation team representatives, held workshops, and provided leadership for Giving Tuesday campaigns, and we hold everyone accountable to protocols and best practices. Next slide. We create videos that play automatically after a donor contributes online, and we send personalized videos to large donors from our institutions. Next slide. And people really appreciate the thank you plaques that we've custom made for them as shown here. Next slide. And we send Enzo pillows. We send Enzo pillows, African batik cloth, decolonais, and other Buy Black Power products. Donors send us photos from their homes with messages like, quote, lovely Uhuru pillows. They couldn't have been any more perfect for my living room. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love them. Next slide. USM produced these beautiful magnets and journals for donors who gave to the African Women's Health Program. Next slide. And here are the Giving Tuesday basketball court donor gifts. Pictured here is APDF donor in New York assembly member Charles Barron uh, wearing his hoodie and black power blueprint hat. Uh, and we also produce coasters and magnets. Next slide. As the chairman mandates, every member of our party and our movement, wherever they're located, must participate in getting resources to our party. Next slide. At local party events and in community outreach, we must put forward the economic work when that our institutions are for our own liberation and collect resources that are returned to the national office. Next slide. Under the leadership of the ODC and AOBS, we will design a campaign with promotional tools such as outreach boards, brochures, and donor cans. We will conduct training throughout the region and make sure that the regions have methods to accept credit cards. Next slide. We are committed to building the NTU to the maximum to maximize our potential. Our goal is to extend our reach and get more donors. We need more volunteers to get to know all of our donors, steward them and build a relationship to deepen our unity. Next slide. Our mandate is to build the organization capacity for the Africans One Billion Strong donor campaign. Join the AOBS team. Go to One Billion Strong at blackstarindustries.org. You can join in building our volunteer team, the donor recognition team, the social media and the graphics design team and more. Next slide. I'm going to leave you with a quote from the chairman. And I quote, by supporting the Africans One Billion Strong donor campaign, you can be a part of the future, not for African people, but for all those seeking a world of justice and liberation in which all humanity can live in peace as one, Uhuru. So that concludes the One Africa, um, uh, One Billion Strong Donor Campaign report, and we're gonna keep it moving. Our next report would be the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace in Philadelphia, and that's gonna be Northern Region Tiffany Murphy, Ken Gozi, and Kota. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru. Before we begin, we would like to salute, join in saluting Deputy Chair's, Deputy Chair Owner's powerful political report, the Chairman's profound plenary political report, and this historic plenary celebrating 50 years of our glorious party, our glorious party's ongoing relentless revolutionary work. Uhuru, my name is uh, Uhuru. This is the One Africa, One Nation report to the third plenary entitled the relentless pursuit of Black community control of commerce. My name is Tiffany, and I'll be co-presenting with comrades Kota and Kiangozi. Slide. I would like to begin by saluting my leadership, Chairman Omalia Shetela, for dedicating his life to relentless revolutionary struggle and giving the African working class the theory of African internationalism and the roadmap to our liberation. Salute to Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshitela 
for your bold and relentless work in taking the chairman's vision of the Black Power Blueprint and all of the economic development work, making it concrete and making it stylish because the African working class deserves nothing less. Slide. And now the introduction of the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace Steering Committee. From my left, we have Matun, Outreach Coordinator, Kian Gozi, Logistics Coordinator, Kota, Program Coordinator, Yejide, Program Committee, Opa, Vendor Coordinator, King L, Logistics and Vending, Bakra, MTU Volunteer Coordinator in Logistics, and myself as the overall market coordinator. Slide. This year has been, has been one of powerful transformation and leadership exhibited by the Office of Deputy Chair in the Northern Region of the African People's Socialist Party. After two years of practical and online training, the Northern Region was more than ready to take leadership of this long-standing, powerful, anti-colonial institution in opening up the 2021 season in person as part of the overall regional strategy. With the Philadelphia One Africa, One Nation market serving as the blueprint for all movement marketplace models, the urgency to bring back the markets to the community and our 80 plus vendors was greater than ever. In this period, the region was ready to continue the relentless history of building black community control of commerce. And I'll read a quick quote from the chairman that gives real significance to the overall economic work as well as the marketplace. Quote, owning this marketplace allows the African working class the ability to solve its own problems, end quote. Slide. We would like to salute the relentless work of the African People's Education and Defense Fund and Northern Region Economic Hub, Uhuru Furniture Philadelphia, for building the One Africa, One Nation markets, waging relentless political struggle against the city of Philadelphia and Friends of Clark Park, and contributing to the rich history of the party's economic work for the first 15 years of the market's existence. Slide. This anti-colonial institution has been a staple in Philadelphia for over 17 years. One Africa, One Nation markets and all movement institutions provide vendors and small businesses with the opportunity to feed, clothe, and house themselves. Countless vendors have gone on to build thriving brick and mortar businesses that began vending with One Africa, One Nation markets. And now I will turn it over to Key and Gozi for the next section of the report. Uhuru. Uhuru. Slide next slide seven. Tapia Tasima of Abaya Naturals began vending with the One Africa One Nation market in 2012 with a small soap making business. The business named after her daughter Abaya quickly became popular. Tapia saw a need for, for making natural soaps because there was no natural body products out there that met her needs. Tapia has gone on to build a business, including placing her products in Whole Foods and opening up Abaya Natural brick and mortar shops in East Falls in 2019. Next slide. Sharita Powell, owner of Amazula, has been a consistent vendor with the One Africa, One Nation market since 2008, bringing to the park a one-of-a-kind African-centered jewelry, clothing, and gifts from around the world. Sharita is also a fashion designer and a self-taught silversmith, taking her traveling boutique across the country Sharita opened Amazula in 2010 in Reading Terminal and her design studio at Bach in 2015. Amazula and Sharita always returned back to vending at Roots at Clark Park to be amongst the community. Next slide. Volunteers are the heart and soul of the marketplace. We recruit talented and enthusiastic students and community members to help build the market. This happens only through the powerful NTU program led by the deputy chair. Many of our volunteers come to the institution, but stay because they are united with the mission. Much of the recruitment on the ground happens directly at the marketplace online and through online platforms, such as volunteer match and social media. 
On this slide, you can see myself showing a sh market shoppers the amazing content of the Burning Spear newspaper. Mattoon gives a master class on the political line and 14 point platform to a group of high school students and two enthusiastic volunteers show up and show out at the market. We are actively recruiting for graphic artists, program partners and volunteers of all skills and talents. For more information, please call 267-875-3532. Next slide. Here we would like to salute some of our amazing volunteers of the 21 uh, market season. We have Melissa, social media, Opa, vendor coordinator, Juan, on and off market group, Renda, Uhuru Book Fair, Dr. Sunlight, Uhuru Book Fair, Lefty, logistics and outreach, Lou, logistics and cleanup, Louis, website development, Zoe, graphic designer, Shabaka, logistics and security, Ben, video and social media, Daniel, video, Clever, video and social media, Teresa, outreach and social media, and Itana, children's circle. Next slide. And now I'd like to turn it over to Kota to report on the health fair and book fair programming. Next slide. Hello everyone. The 2021 Uhuru Health Festival had the relentless fire, political analysis, and culture that only Uhuru can bring despite being virtual for the second year in a row. The day's events kicked off with a lively dance exercise from Razak and drumming by Karen Smith. Next slide. Powerful panels on decolonizing mental health in a material way, health partner statements from refugee health partners, and Girl Trek, next slide. And a compelling keynote presentation from Dr. Aisha Fields of the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project, APDEP, next slide. In the fall, we were ecstatic to bring back the seventh annual One Africa, One Nation Uhuru Book Fair to Philadelphia in person. The community was clearly hungry for culture, connection, and of course, the chairman's political analysis. Here in this slide are community member Damon breakdancing at the Children's Circle, Indian group, the Philly Music Project, giving an electrifying cultural concert in the bottom right, author readings, and a debut DJ set for myself as Comrade Kota. Next slide. And now here are some highlights from our 2021 season overall. Next slide. In May and June of 2021, the market was sold out with a combination of new and returning vendors. Bringing the markets back was like going to a family reunion and even our new vendors felt this as well. Next slide. In this new period, we brought in our mass organizations such as the African National Women's Organization, International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles, and the Uhuru Solidarity Movement more closely, which brought that much more political strength to the markets. We also saw the contradiction of the influx of renegade vendors popping up at the markets. So the committee huddled and developed a solution. Next slide. In July, the committee developed increased security protocols to serve two purposes, to protect our registered vendors and to increase organizational presence around the market area. These protocols included custom wristbands and staff t-shirts pictured in the top left. July and August also brought back some of our returning vendors from far away, including Ajwa Hawkins from South Carolina, pictured um, on the left side of the top right photo, and Supa pictured in the bottom right a Korean crafter that absolutely loves our markets and is itching to come back again for the 2022 season. Our food vendor, Tootsie's Tacos, stole the show with their amazing food. And we even had urban cowboys come through the market last summer. Next slide. September was the return of the Uhuru Book Fair in person, as we mentioned earlier, and it was met with much excitement. We had a wide range of booksellers, authors, poets, cultural performances, and the chairman's moving presentation discussing the state of the colonial virus at the time and the profound role that African women play in leading various party institutions. October was met with another sold out marketplace with a wide range of crafters. And now Kian Gozi will close out the 2021 One Africa, One Nation Marketplace highlights. Next slide. In December, 2021, the One Africa, One Nation market held its first indoor holiday market at a brand new Lucien Blackwell Center in West Philadelphia. 
This gave the committee the opportunity to engage and connect with a different section of Philadelphia. The holiday market hosted 35 vendors, both returning and new. It was set up as a crafter's market, which made it much more dynamic ahead of the holidays. We were able to win support of new vendors ahead of the 22 outdoor season. Here's a brief video clip of our amazing holiday market and our vendors. We should own and operate and control the economy of our community. Setting up these little stores and developing them and expanding them into larger operations. You and I have to make a stop. And the best place to start is right in the community where we live. Look around. Everything that is taking care of business is together. Uhuru, next slide. The victories for the season were Northern Region successfully held seven markets, one large in-person event, and one large virtual event. Ushered in a new class of legacy vendors that unite with the mission of the market and vow to vend and support the market moving forward. Developed a new market logo, which you see in, in the lower corner. Gave leadership to the plan to remove unregistered vendors set up in the partnership with um, Friends of Clark Park and Fairmont Park and won the support of new vendors as a result. Next slide. Next steps, recruit, recruit, recruit. Develop an aggressive volunteer recruitment strategy via the interview program. Upgrade the website to assist online vendors, registration and establish a vetting process. Provide workshops and programs that improve business setup and resources for vendors. Build partnerships with the Buy Black Power campaign and connecting vendors. Develop draft marketplace budget to include line items for a northern regional office space. Strengthen community partnerships with organizations to cast a wider net and the increased One Africa, One Nation branding reach. Next slide. Uhuru, comrades, we are winning. And that concludes the report. Thank you. Uhuru, thank you so much, Tiffany, Kota, and Ken Gozi for that outstanding report. We're going to keep it moving. Up next is Uhuru Foods and Pies, Oakland and St. Pete report, 42 years of relentless revolutionary work, building an independent African economy. And this is going to be led by comrades Maureen Bakri, Janice and Ciali. Uhuru, thank you, Comrade Deputy Chair. 42 years of relentless revolutionary leadership, work building an independent African economy. Slide. Salute to Chairman O'Malley Ashatella, my leadership who's dedicated his life the emancipation of African people at home and abroad. Over 50 years of relentless revolutionary leadership, defeating the challenges and advancing the redemption of Africa in our lifetime. Slide. Salute to Deputy Chair for her brilliant presentation on today and for her tireless work leading all the economic work of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhura Movement. Rain or Shine shows her relentless efforts to build real self-determination for the African working class in our lifetime. Slide. Ohuro Foods and Pies is not a business owned by an individual, but part of an independent African economy that African people are building to once again own, control our resources, including our land, food production, and distribution. We are socialists, not capitalists. Slide. What makes Ohuro Foods and Pies unique is not just great foods, Although we have great foods and pies, we're affording the right of African people ourselves to determine our lives and future in the word self-governing. Slide. It should be Uhuru Foods and Pies history. I think we're aside. Okay, there we go. Slide. In 1978, the party was building the campaign to free Desi Woods. As a fundraiser for the March in San Francisco, the party led a food booth at the San Francisco Pride Festival in June, 1978. 
This was the real birth of Uhuru Foods and Pies. Slide. The African People's Socialist Party formed the African People's Solidarity Committee, APSC, in 1976. The party called for solidarity, not charity, from the white community where the resources of the world are concentrated. APSC Chairwoman's Penny's earliest development of Uhuru Foods and Pies concretized what material solidarity looks like. APSC did bake sales and began doing concessions at progressive political events, theaters, concerts, fairs, and festivals in the San Francisco Bay Area and other cities. APSC sold tens of thousands of giant chocolate chip cookies at Grateful Dead concerts. Slide. Throughout the 80s and 90s, APSC took the party's African community campaigns out to white communities through Uhuru Foods and Pies, winning funds, selling thousands of Bernie Spear newspapers and getting support from tens of thousands of people. Information and signs at concessions promoted reparations to the African community and the African-led campaigns, including the campaign to smash the crime bill that was sponsored by Joe Biden in the 1990s. Slide. Many events were controlled by suburban chamber of commerces and white left organizations. The party had to fight for every single resource. Uhuru Foods would often be denied a food booth based upon the left attacking the party and demanding support from the black community for white rights or under the guise of events being open to only local organizations, which translated to white. The party had to take on the white gay movement to be at SF Pride and take on a parasitic Northern California community organization that controlled and raised its entire annual budget from the biggest reggae festival in the country. Politics is concentrated economics. Slide. As a result of the struggle of the party to consolidate APSC as African internationalists, they were assigned to transform our reparations work into party institutions. In 1987, the Uhura movement opened the Uhura Bakery Cafe and Catering in Oakland. Slide. The Uhura Bakery quickly became an extremely popular institution serving healthy comfort foods to rave reviews from food critics and the public. It was a popular political organizing center for the party and quickly became an African-led institution, proving then that economic and political are one. The bakery cafe was forced to close in December 1989 due to damage from three mysterious fires in the building that the landlord refused to repair. Slide. Uhura Foods and Pies became preferred vendors at prestigious events like Monterey Blues Festival, Reggae on the River, San Francisco Pride, Oakland's own Art and Soul Festival, and Honda Grand Prix in St. Pete. Slide. It was a huge advance when deputy chair came in and branded Uhuru Foods. Slide. According to Redbeard, a longtime Uhuru Foods and Pies volunteer, Uhuru Foods kitchens in the California area, and there's one we can't remember. I guess our memory was fading a little bit over the time. Slide. After using five kitchens in St. Pete, we were finally able to bake in the kitchen of our own starting in 2012. Pie buyers were able to come to the Uhuru house to pick up holiday pies or pick up general orders weekly through the season. They also get tours of Jico Kitchen, Aquaba Hall, Black Power 96 Radio, and O'Malley Eschatella Resource Library for full vision of the party's institutions that Uhuru Foods and Pies funds. Slide. Our goal is to build regional and national sales of Uhuru Foods. The St. Louis Jico Bakery Cafe and the African Independence Workforce Program are the means to build this vision. Next slide. I wanna bring on Janice to give the next portion of this report, Uhuru. Thank you, Vice Chair Bakri. Here's our national team, which consists of Maureen as the director, Bakri as the vice chair, Sayali as the project manager, and I'm the St. Pete manager. Next slide. Here's the Oakland team. Maureen is the Oakland director and coordinator of production. Bakri is the market coordinator, recruitment coordinator, and assists with the sales and operations. 
and Sayali is the project manager, sales coordinator, and assistant production coordinator. Next slide. This is the St. Pete team. Al coordinates operations and pie mixing production. Marge has volunteered weekly for over three years as the lead baker. Pam who volunteers weekly on baking. USM member Sarah, who's volunteered on both pie sales and production for years. Abraham, who volunteers weekly on the pie booth and I'm the overall coordinator. Next slide. These are Oakland regular volunteers who are on the markets, in the kitchen, and on sales. Jason, Francisco, Derek, Pete, Wayne, Obi, Alex, and Kara. Uhuru Foods carries out the NTU program to recruit volunteers who respond to our call, Baking for Black Power. Next slide. Volunteers participate in every aspect of the pie campaign, production, operations, and sales. Next slide. At least 80 people volunteered two or more hours each in Oakland's pie campaign. Some volunteered 20 or more hours, including comrades who came to Oakland from the Western region. This was in spite of COVID restrictions. Next slide. In St. Pete, Uhuru Solidarity Movement participates annually to call and text previous pieers buyers for holiday pie sales. We have students from the University of Florida and many other volunteers who work on the pie prep and assembly. This is the photos of some of the Pinellas Park High School Key Club who's been volunteering on production and sales for over five years. And one pie seller, Chess, began taking orders at her apartment complex during their weekly farmer's market. And then she also joined the grants team as a copy editor. Next slide. Volunteers from all I'm sorry, in St. Pete, we had over 30 volunteers for the holiday pie sales in November and December. Next slide. Volunteers from all generations have been our mainstay for decades. Student groups and longtime supporters continue to show their unity with the mission. Next slide. Volunteers are the heart and soul of Uhuru Foods. Pictured in the center is Dorothy from St. Pete, who volunteered weekly for over 10 years and just celebrated her 96th birthday. Next slide. In case you haven't had the opportunity to taste Uhuru pies, they're made from scratch with quality all natural ingredients. Our signature pie is sweet potato. We make apple, apple cranberry, pecan, chocolate bourbon pecan, pumpkin, blackberry, mixed berry, peach, strawberry rhubarb, bean, and vegan sweet potato. Next slide. These are some of our sweet and savory pie displays. Slide. Next slide. We get praise on Yelp, Square, and in emails. Customers come call us to, to tell us about it. They come back to our booths. We heard comments like, my brother-in-law said it was the best pumpkin pie he's ever had. Your pies are fantastic. Next slide. Here's what one of our shoppers had to say, if you could please play the video. Hi, I just want to let you know that this food is awesome, especially the vegan jerk chicken and my favorite the jerk chicken is nice and spicy and wonderful, and my husband and I always fight over it. And the pies, you can't beat. I've tried almost all of them. I can't even tell you what my favorite is. I think maybe the bourbon chocolate, that one with the, the nuts in it. I'm losing my mask, but you guys are awesome. Don't ever go away. Keep doing what you're doing. And Merry Thank Christmas. You. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Uhuru. So a huge part of the success of Uhuru Foods and Pies is the unity that people have with the political objectives and the movement. So next, Sayali is going to present our 2021 victories. Uhuru. Uhuru. We have a tremendous history, amazing volunteers, a brilliant mission and incredible victories in 2021. This is due to the relentless leadership of the party. Next slide. Building relationships is in the DNA of Uhuru Foods and Pies and the relationships and partnerships established from decades of relentless work to build an independent African economy are won on the basis of material solidarity. So many people we are relating to now, including donors and the owners of shared kitchens we worked in, new Uhuru Bakery Cafe and all the struggles of that period. Next slide. 
We met Humble C. Brewing from Santa Cruz, California in 2017. They supported APEDF with the Black is Beautiful Beer campaign created by an African brewer after the murder of George Floyd. During African History Month in 2021, Humble C collaborated with the Rural Pies to build the Rural Pies brand, leveraging the prestige in the brewery scene. They created a double fudge walnut brownie stout and we created a pie to pair together. Humble C introduced her rural pies to 16 new bottle shops, brew pubs, breweries, and restaurants in Northern California. This generated resources for Huru Chico and opened up new relationships. Next slide. We increased our pie sales through these relationships with other craft brewers, built off of introductions by Humble C. We've done pop-ups at Timiskau Brewing, The Good Hop, Drake's, Hop Asylum, Out of the Barrel, City Beer, and Rare Barrel. Next slide. The domino effect of our relationships are evident from our recent introduction to Humble Sea Brewery. Humble Sea introduced us to Patrick at Whole Foods to get a wholesale account. Patrick then introduced us to the Slow Money Group who invited the Roof Pies to speak at the Food Funded Conference to win investors. Next slide. Fiali's presentation to Food Funded won 75,500 from John and one more donor. The USM Reparations Legacy Conference brought in $15,000. More came from Humble Seed Collaborations, Rural Foods, and other longtime donors. With these powerful relationships, we have raised $155,000 towards the build out of the Gico Kitchen Bakery Cafe in St. Louis. We have completed the plans with the designer and architect and have developed a pilot curriculum for the African Independence Workforce Program at the St. Louis Gico. Next slide. Oakland Uhuru Pies was accepted into Whole Foods in June 2021 for several products. We were introduced to Whole Foods by Humble Sea. They were interested because of the mission of Uhuru Foods and Pies and the quality. This process continues to move forward, but has been challenging. This process will help us with future wholesale accounts and being a national distributor. We have consultants in the wings to help us through this process, including the owner of the kitchen we bake in, and the owner of Firebrand Artisan Bakery and representatives from local and state health agencies. Next slide. Rural Foods and Pies continues to enjoy great relationships with prestigious new and returning donors of ingredients and supplies. In-kind donations coordinator Pete, along with longtime supporter Red Beard, made calls and emails and have built relationships over decades. And if the engineer could please click on the slide. Escali donated scales to professionalize our pie assembly. Comtech gave us a discount on our pie press. King Arthur donated 2,400 pounds of flour. New Cal donated 27 cases of eggs. Guitar donated um, gourmet chocolate chips. Riva donated 30 cases of jumbo sweet potatoes. Bertie donated 10 cases of sweet jumbo sweet potatoes. Garcia donated 20 cases of jumbo sweet potatoes. Clover donated 30 gallons of half and half. Imperfect Foods donated eight cases of honey crisp apples. Earthquake provided 10 cases of Granny Smith apples at half price. And Publix in St. Pete donated a $200 gift certificate. And the next slide. So <clears throat> people donate on a regular basis when they meet us. This donor, Khadija, wrote us to say, quote, at a farmer's market while visiting St. Petersburg, there were great representatives selling Uhuru pies, which attracted me to the stall. I'm, an, I'm a product of various organizations and individuals bringing me out of poverty and transforming my life. 40 years later, I am so proud to be able to pay back and forward so the next generation can be empowered. Thank you, Black Power Blueprint, for all your efforts. Cheers, unquote. Next slide. Peru Foods built relationships and won prestige from the 1,000 sweet potato pies we provided to Stephen Curry's Eat, Learn, Play Foundation Christmas event in 2020. Even though they did a different event this year, our participation opened the door to other wholesale accounts, pop-up locations, and grants. We used the photo for the application for Whole Foods. That exposure also sealed the deal for our relationship with Red Bay Coffee, and Square even mentioned it for providing a grant. After producing 1,000 pies in one night, we know what we are capable of and what we can do in the new St. Louis Deco. We're looking forward to more opportunities like this. Next slide. 
People are coming to us because of our political mission. Rural Foods is recognized by buyers and in food business circles. Our longevity and the new political period of support of Black business continues to bring more sales, donations, and volunteers to Rural Foods. People see we are building and winning. All roads lead to rural. Next slide. COVID-19 continues to impact us with challenges in sales, supply chain, volunteers, and staff, but we have navigated it with a revolutionary approach. In-person volunteering had just begun and then was impacted by Omicron. Volunteers took a lot of social responsibility to cancel shifts if exposed or not feeling well. We continue to uphold all COVID protocols for safety of our team and customers. We missed out on selling hundreds of holiday pies at Oracle, Adobe, Cliff Bar, and other offices that still remain closed. But we continue to be in touch and look forward to developing these relationships in 2022 and beyond. Next slide. We took an African internationalist dialectical approach to the economic crisis of imperialism. We got ahead of the so-called supply chain issue. We ordered large quantities of items that might become difficult to get expensive or unavailable. Deliveries that used to take two days now took five weeks. We never ran out of any of our ingredients during the holiday pie campaign and our stock to begin 2022. Next slide. We updated our branding in 2021 with help from volunteers from Adobe Corporation. Next slide. Baru Pies Oakland delivers to these businesses who continue to support our mission to build an independent African economy. Next slide. Baru Pies Oakland got four new wholesale accounts for the holidays. We need to convert all those locations to year round accounts in 2022. With fully staffed sales and production teams in both areas, we can get even more wholesale accounts, company sales, and individual sellers. Next slide. St. Pete Fall Pie sales increased 23% over last year. We have many new customers and longtime loyal annual pie buyers. We have a 10 year relationship with an attorney who buys pies for the entire staff in three office locations, continuing despite COVID. We have been selling pies weekly at the Saturday morning market since 2017, rather than just during the fall pie season. Now, I'd like to turn it back over to Bakri Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you. Next slide. Beginning in October 1st, Maureen retired from her full-time bourgeois job and transformed and transitioned into full-time director of Uhuru Foods. Our goal has to have a full-time director since 2020. We finally accomplished this. Next slide. We moved into a new kitchen only in Oakland on October 1st. The new kitchen has more professional baking equipment, including a dough sheeter, 60 and 80 quart mixers, and a rotating oven that bakes 159 inch pies at one time. Next slide. In the new kitchen, we don't have to share our shift time or fight over oven space. We get cold and dry storage on site, which alleviated a lot of operations work to transport ingredients and mixes. Next slide. We couldn't expand in the other kitchen where we were in. The new kitchen opened new possibilities, but we had to adjust to many changes at the beginning of our busiest season, including night shifts uh, for baking and everyone rose to the occasion. At some point, we will need to have our own kitchen in Oakland after the Jico kitchen in St. Louis is open. Slide. We bought a pie dough press now uh, to make our own pie shells in Oakland. Please play the quick video clip. That's 600 pie shells we made in one day on the racks. Next slide. We got a grant to pay for reusable collapsible delivery crates from the Stop Waste Agency. The crate increases our professionalism efficiency and cuts down on pie storage. If you can play the video. 
there is no other program where the African working class constantly engages in controlling the means of production. This is what socialism looks like. I want to next bring Maureen forward. Next slide. Uhura. Thank you to this team of uh, Western Regional Rep Bakri, Sayali Moyenda, and Janice, and I also want to salute Deputy Chair. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about our goals and plans for 2022. Uhura, next slide. Our number one focus in 2022 is to build a team using the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade Program. We particularly want to implement the milestones and recognitions protocols of NTU to recognize and appreciate our tremendous volunteers. Next slide. We will focus on filling these key coordinator positions in both Oakland and St. Pete. Number one is a volunteer coordinator, and then we need a baker, sales, and promotion coordinators. Uhuru. Next slide. We will also recruit volunteers to build our teams. In 2019, we created an excellent training program. We will use the manual to train teams and especially provide advanced training when the tremendous regional forces come to the regional hub in Oakland to work with the Hurupais. Next slide. In Q1, we will hire and train a baker and an operations person in Oakland. More staff and volunteers will allow us to implement new production models in our kitchen. Next slide. We will recruit experienced professional volunteers and interns through postings on LinkedIn, Catch a Fire, Handshake, and other social media sites. Next slide. Political education deepens unity and understanding and retention of volunteers and donors. In 2022, we will resume quarterly Colonialism as Cuisine webinars. Our first webinar is in the first week of March. Additionally, we will invite our volunteers to participate paid in party and APSC USM local and regional studies. Next slide, please. We have relaunched bi-weekly volunteer rallies. These are key to appreciation, retention, and volunteer development. Next slide, please. We are creating a calendar of tabling opportunities. Consistent community outreach like this table at the University of South Florida, quote, get on board day, falls each fall, nets many signups. In the past year, we won four consistent PI volunteers from that table. Next slide. Promotions is key to building sales, volunteers, and all support. We are recruiting artists, photographers, videographers to this team. We are promoting hashtag baking for black power to amplify the mission of Black Star Industries and the quality of Uhuru Pies. Our goal is to increase the social media presence, newsletters, and video presentations. Next slide. Uhuru pies are sold at the Oakland Uhuru Furniture Store and Uhuru Furniture Warehouse sales in Aquaba Hall now as part of the Buy Black Power products of Black Star Industries. In 2022, we are calling on customers and retailers to go beyond Buy Black and to unite with Buy Black Power. Next slide, please. St. Pete will also amplify the visibility of the Uhuru House as a hub for Uhuru pies and Buy Black Power. Next slide, please. We will go live on Facebook and other platforms from the kitchen, markets, and pop-ups. Next slide. With the help of professionals in the industry, we will be developing all aspects of our sales plan. Our sales plan will include wholesale, pop-ups, and holiday sales. Next slide. We will aggressively pursue businesses for wholesale accounts where our partners and associates have their products, especially Black-owned products. In St. Pete, we will pursue several new gourmet markets now being built, including Wild Fork and Sprouts. Next. To grow stronger economically in the region, Uhuru Pies continues to navigate the onboarding process with Whole Foods, and we plan to complete this process soon. Next slide. In Oakland, we continue to apply and work to get into more markets in the region by winning the mission. In St. Pete, we need to recruit staff to carry out additional available markets and to pursue breweries like in Oakland. Next slide. Uhuru Pies is growing our calendar of special holiday events, including the movement's own African holidays. Next. We will manage and develop our product line and holiday sales plans. 
We want to develop more plant-based and savory products, gift packs, corporate sizes, and seasonal favorites. Uhuru Pies is working to professionalize shipping of pies. Next. Our bakers and artists are creating custom design pies like these. This is an expansion area like Uhuru Foods Enzo spin-off and the brainchild of Deputy Chair. Next slide. We continue to improve our production, staff model, equipment, and vehicles. Next slide. A high level goal for this year is working with the Black Power Blueprint Projects Committee. We will meet in the week following this plenary to complete the funding timeline and construction plans for the St. Louis Urujiko. Next. To sum up, our roadmap for 2022 is simply recruit, 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 promote, 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 sell, 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 produce and develop, fund and build out a Hurujiko, and continue on the road to African self-reliance. Next. Join Uhuru Foods and Pies. You can get in touch with us at these emails, okun.volunteer at uhurufoods.org or stpetevolunteer at uhurufoods.org. Uhuru, salute to Deputy Chair. Uhuru, Bereen, Bakri, Siali, and Janice for that powerful, powerful report on Uhuru Foods and Pies, St. Petersburg, and Oakland. Thank you, comrades. So we're going to keep it moving, comrades. So next up is Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles, Philadelphia and Oakland. And that's going to be Stephanie, Janine, Alexandro, Sheila, Ali, Ruby, Ali and, and Bub. Uhuru, comrades. Uhuru. Uhuru. We're honored to present the Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles Report to the Third Plenary of the Seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party. We salute this powerful and deeply moving plenary and the 50th anniversary of the Vanguard Party of the African Working Class Revolution. We salute Chairman Omali Ishitala's fearless, scientific, courageous, and brilliant leadership and unite fully with the chairman's political report. We salute the profound leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zunea Shitala, who we have the honor of working under and salute and unite with Deputy Chair's powerful political report. We salute the National Central Committee of the party and all party members. Next slide. So the theme of our report is relentless, building African economic development and self-determination for 33 years. Forging ahead through COVID and beyond under Deputy Chair Ona Zene Shetela's leadership. Next slide. Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles in Oakland and Philadelphia salute our powerful and brilliant leadership, Chairman Amali Yeshatela and Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshatela. We salute the relentless vision and leadership of the chairman for 50 years. The chairman has created the winning strategy for anti-colonial dual power through building the independent liberated economy of the African nation with institutions that address all aspects of human life in the hands of the African working class. The chairman says, quote, when we talk about the struggle for self-reliance, for economic development, we are talking about the ability to produce and reproduce material life, to feed, clothe, and house our people. We must begin to build our own power. The political and economic are one, end quote. We salute the relentless leadership of the deputy chair, Ona Zene Yeshitela, to put this vision on the ground and make African workers' power a reality with over 50 institutions and programs in the hands of the African working class under her leadership. Deputy chair says, quote, we are on a mission. It's not what we say, it's what we do. We must develop an independent economy that meets our needs. We cannot solve our problems alone, but with each other, we can build an economy that sustains us and puts us on the road to independence and self-determination. End quote. The chairman and deputy chair have provided clear and relentless leadership to the many institutions of APDEF, including Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles in Oakland for 33 years and in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for 28 years. Uhuru, we are winning. Uhuru. So this is a short history of Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles. Chairman Omali Ishitala and the African People's Socialist Party always fought to build anti-colonial dual and contending power 
for the African working class. Since the party's inception, the chairman created a strategy for African liberation. Next slide. The chairman understood that the political and economic are one, that economic self-reliance is the basis of political self-determination and power. The party organized African resistance to colonial conditions, including the campaigns to free Desi Woods for community control of housing in Oakland and upholding the legacy of Huey P. Newton and the Black Panther Party. Next slide. The party formed APSC in 1976 to organize members of the colonizer nation to win reparations under the leadership of the African revolution and to bring black power to the colonizer community. APSC's work was material solidarity, building fundraisers, including a booth at the Berkeley flea market, food booths at street fairs, and selling giant chocolate chip cookies and pies. Next slide. The party struggled with APSC for consistent material solidarity, not charity, by building economic institutions. APSC opened brick and mortar stores in Oakland in the 1980s, including Uhuru Furniture and Uhuru Bakery Cafe, a political and economic center where the chairman often spoke. Next slide. Under the slogan, reinforcements are on the way, the party came to Philly in response to the murderous city bombing of Move in 1985. And PDOM and the party led relentless struggle for decades, pushing back police murder and all the attacks on the African community. APSC came in 1986, opened a solidarity center and operated Uhuru Foods and Pies for many years. We opened Uhuru Furniture in 1994 in a 750 square foot space. We were there for 20 years. Next slide. Uhuru Furniture underwent a total transformation under Deputy Chair Onizane's leadership since 2010, from solidarity fundraisers to African self-determination institutions. This included branding, professional training through NARTS, systematizing all protocols, including POS and HR systems, and the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade. DC Ona created spin-offs, including ENZO, African Style at Home and Abroad. Next slide. Uhuru Furniture is surviving and thriving under, is surviving COVID and thriving under Deputy Chair Ona's leadership. We followed the protocols of the People's War Commission and Deputy Chair's strategy to go to the people for political and financial support, selling over the phone and doing live shows and asking every customer to donate. We built the donor development program under the leadership of the Africans One Billion Strong. Next slide. Another spin-off Deputy Chair envisioned was Uhuru on the move. In 2014, Deputy Chair Ona led the re relocation of the Philly store to a 4,000 square foot building and the expansion of the Oakland store doubling the square footage. In 2019, Uhuru Furniture celebrated the 25th and 30th anniversaries. Uhuru, next slide. Uhuru. From the Uhura Furniture team here in Oakland, carrying out APDF's vision for economic, African economic and cultural marketplaces, building community commerce and African economic self-reliance. We want to introduce our team. Uhuru, next slide. Uhuru, I am Janine. I am on the steering committee. I am the sales and donations coordinator. Uhuru, my name is Yolanda. I'm on the steering committee here at Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles, and I am also a sales associate. Uhuru. Uhuru, my name is Sheila. I'm on the steering committee here at Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles. I am a sales associate. Uh, my name is Alejandro. I'm part of the steering committee and I'm also the uh, operations coordinator. Hi, this is Mark. I'm part of the steering committee and I'm the donations coordinator. Gerald is on the steering committee and is the truck team coordinator. Uhuru, I'm Stephanie and I'm the store manager and the interim marketing coordinator. Yes, my name is Mr. Luis Reyes Barrero and I work here for Uhuru with the operations team. My name is Steven, and I'm a member of the operations team. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm a truck navigator. Uhuru, I'm Ty, the marketing intern. 
Uhuru. So we're really honored to give this report today. Here in Oakland, we had tremendous victories in 2021 that have all happened in the context of the African People's Socialist Party's relentless work. We developed our Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade program and hosted very successful warehouse sales at Aquaba Hall. We are building the leadership of our team. We built our donor program and the direct donations increased. Our sales increased significantly and we continued to build our capacity to win grants and develop community relationships. This next video shows the developments in our Uhuru N2 volunteer program at, the, at Uhuru Furniture in Oakland. Then there is a brief look at the work that we did this year to build our Enzo line with the Uhuru NTU volunteer painting workshops. Next slide. Today, one of the ways we actually appreciate our volunteers is with the volunteer of the quarter. And we have a plaque that, you know, we put right up the sales desk so that everybody can see it. Um, we also give them a $25 gift, gift card and also a gift certificate. And we also take their photograph, which goes right next to the plaque so that everybody is able to see it and appreciate them. We also have special thank you gifts that we give um, our volunteers. Um, we have milestone programs, and this is where um, we give our volunteers t-shirts and hoodies, depending on the number of hours that they have accumulated with us. We have virtual volunteer meetups, and these are very special because some are in Nova Scotia, some are in Hawaii, some are here in California, but they never get to meet each other. So this is one way they get to meet and how they can keep volunteering, not just with us, but with the movement as a whole and so much more. Space Dama, we have Emily, Sue and Rose, Jay, Juan, we have Jay, Salma from Toronto. And we have Jeremy, Brenda from Michigan, and Eric, and you know, there's so many more. We have the NTU volunteer wall um, in our store, and this way all our customers and our staff can get to appreciate and see all our volunteers. But you can also sign up to be a volunteer and attend, and attend one of our weekly new volunteer orientations. Enzo is Uhuru Furniture's latest furniture and home decor line called Enzo African Styles at Home and Abroad. Enzo is a Kikongo word that means home and Enzo products include furniture that is hand painted with traditional African designs or upholstered using African fabric. Enzo is, is African style that you can bring into your home. And some of them comment not knowing how to paint mm -hmm. and are very excited that you know when they put on a base coat and they, you know some of them do stencils and they're very excited they can they can actually do it so it's very very positive we were very very excited that we were awarded the grant by the stop waste organization recognizing and uhuru furniture is helping to recycle hundreds and thousands of pounds of furniture every year and the enzo program increases that so we really appreciate their support Uhuru. So the, the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade also develops relationships with agencies that pay volunteers to work with us for job training and work experience. This year, we added three more agencies who are providing us with volunteers. Next slide. Uhuru. During the 2020 COVID shutdown, APEDF offered the use of our Kaba Hall to Uhuru Furniture to store our overflow flow furniture. Deputy Chair's vision has always been for Yuhu Furniture to have sales from the Yuhu House. <clears throat> and in 2021, it was very successful reality. We held warehouse sales once per month and often had lines down the block of customers waiting to get inside, even in the rain. Next slide. There is so much wealth in the Bay Area and having all this gorgeous space allowed us to take more and more high quality donations. Our truck team led by Gerald set up over 400 pieces of furniture in a beautiful way. We split the sales team so we were open and selling at both locations once a month and this really increased our income for the, for the year. Next slide. The chairman has mandated that all regions build their regional hubs. The warehouse sales brought Yuhu furniture to the historic 
African community of East Oakland and brought the community to Aquaba Hall in the Uhuru House, which is the West Regional Hub. This built a new base of support for Uhuru Furniture and for Aquaba Hall. Next slide. The warehouse sales brought all the work of the Uhuru movement together. People came in for a sofa, left with Uhuru foods and pies, NGO and Decolonate products, Uhuru Planet Revolutionary Apparel, Burning Spear Publications, Uzi Bracelets, and they learned all the work we are doing in Oakland. Next slide. Um, while at Aquaba Hall, we are very honored to have contributed to some needed repairs of this historic space, including ceiling repair and installation of professional back doors. Next slide. Yeah. Quabba Hall is reopening as an event and community retail space. Real estate in California is widely expensive, wildly expensive, but through waging a community campaign, we secured a 1,400 square foot space in the Fruitvale neighborhood, which expands our base into this indigenous community. Next slide. All of our victories could not have happened without the tremendous daily work and leadership of our entire team. We had an Uhuru NTU coordinator for the first time ever. Our truck team coordinator, Gerald, will be taking over the role of warehouse coordinator at making that move and expansion possible. Our sales, donations, and operations team teams have the very best and most dedicated leadership ever. We built the steering committee who all shoulder high levels of responsibility and help to solve the problems. Next slide. Like small businesses US-wide, we have been very seriously impacted by the crisis of imperialism, including high prolonged illness rates in the African community from COVID and inability to pay for childcare that are keeping people out of the workforce. We need drivers, but under colonialism, African people have their driver's license taken away. The work to hire new employees used to be periodic work, but now hiring and training has to be ongoing work that is prioritized throughout the year. Every person on our team brings so much, which is evident because despite being short staffed this year, we are still able to have so many significant victories. So a quick plug that if you or someone you know is interested in working for this amazing institution, visit uhurufurniture.blogspot.com today. Next slide. Our victories continue with an increase in direct donations. This year, I, Janine, joined the Africans One Billion Strong donor development team representing Uhuru Furniture in Oakland. Despite struggle, we have experienced huge growth and have begun to build our team. It's myself, Mark, Angie, and Sienna. In 2020, we began asking every shopper to make an additional donation. In 2021, we had 1,250 unique donations, which is an 180% increase from 2020. Also, the amount of donations raised at the checkout desk increased by 200% from 2020. We also participated in the most successful Giving Tuesday campaign yet, and we represented Uhuru Furniture in Oakland on the 24-hour reparations telethon hosted by USM. Over 250 donors gave to that campaign from Oakland. We, are hosted, we also hosted a campaign in October to raise money for our expansion into a new warehouse. We met our financial goal and the campaign really helped us find our new warehouse space. Next slide. Uh, the people have responded to all these campaigns with tremendous support and acknowledgement of the critical role that Uhuru Furniture and APDF are playing in building genuine economic power in the hands of the African community. People love Uhura Furniture and Collectibles and they say it every day while shopping. Next slide. The victories continued last year with our gross sales. 2021 was our highest earning year ever. We were 33% higher than 2019 and 30% higher in than 2016, which was previously our highest year. A big challenge going forward is the dramatic increase in expenses of doing business in the Bay Area, which we will address in our mandates. Next slide. How did our sales increase? Well, in addition to the warehouse sales, more direct donations and all the work by the amazing staff and volunteers, we also have the biggest sales team we've ever had. Yolanda and Sheila really talk to the people about our mission and win them to our campaigns. 
Our Facebook Live sales events have been a key promotional tool that increases sales every time we do them. And the number of over the phone sales has also increased, which highlights the need to sell online, which we'll also address in our mandates. Next slide. Another factor in our increased growth, gross income is that Mark has really advanced the donation scheduling process to the highest yet. The quality of furniture has dramatically increased, but despite COVID, we continue to be voted best of the East Bay in the East Bay Express Readers Poll for 12 years in a row and counting. Next slide. <clears throat> the quantity and quality of items moving through Yahoo Furniture is all inspiring. A shout out again to our amazing truck team and my operations team that move these pieces of furniture every day. This has allowed us to increase our piece, piece our, our prices on the higher end items while still keeping our prices incredibly accessible. Next slide. That's great. Deputy Chair has always led Uhuru Furniture with the vision of diversifying by building spin-off businesses and products that further meet the needs of the community. These are additional revenue streams, but more importantly, they help us reach new demographics, broadening our base of shoppers who then become supporters. It also brings resources to other organizations within the Uhuru movement. Buy Black Power products currently available are Decolonize products, Uzi Jewelry, Fresh Baked Four Inch Pies and Cookies from Uhuru Foods and Pies, African Flags, Vanguard Seven Lipsticks, Burning Spear Newspaper and Publications, Uhuru Planet Apparel, and more. In 2021, we increased our sales of Buy Black Power products by 338% over 2020. Next slide. Our Enzo line at Uhuru Furniture also increased, including the furniture, pillows, African leader portraits, and greeting cards. In 2021, we increased our sales of Enzo items by 131% over 2020. Next slide. So though we have been impacted by the crisis of imperialism, Uhuru Furniture survived and has thrived because of the leadership and strategy of the office of the deputy chair. The way forward is clear, hire and recruit, build our donor development team, and we have to build the grants team. Under the leadership of the Mighty Mighty Grants team, we have won grants from Kaiser Permanente and Stop Waste, both multiple years. But we need more. This is the baddest nonprofit on the planet who's getting the most done, making every dollar go the furthest. And we have to use our nonprofit status to the greatest extent possible. When we get out into the community, opportunities arise, like they have with the Unity Council and the Plant Exchange, both this past year. Next slide. So we want to wrap, wrap up the Oakland Uhura Furniture portion of this report by calling on everyone to support Uhura Furniture. Follow us on social media and help share our posts. Go to our website for all our job and volunteer opportunities and sign up today. Uhuru, and now for the Uhuru Philly report. Next slide. Uhuru, want to salute the mighty Oakland store team for that incredible report. And here's the Philadelphia report. And we are opening with a recent promotional video. So roll video, please. This holiday season, come to Uhuru Furniture and buy Black Power. Uhuru, which means freedom, so glad to be here. And on Facebook Live on a Thursday afternoon in my favorite store. Why did you say it's my favorite store? Because they have everything here, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And at reasonable prices, and it's all going to great causes about changing the world and we're working all together to do that. Two floors of top quality, low price, ever-changing furniture and housewares. 15% off store-wide and buy one, get one free on all single chairs, lamps, art, and mirrors through the end of the year. Uhura Furniture features Enzo African-style home decor, including hand-painted furniture, handmade pillows, greeting cards, portraits of African leaders, jewelry, and gift certificates. When you shop, donate, and volunteer, you contribute to the African People's Education and Defense Fund programs for health, education, human rights, and economic self-determination by and for the Black community. Uhuru, 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 what do we do? Offer programs of liberation for African self-determination. Uhuru means freedom. Uhuru means freedom. 
Next slide, please. And now we want to introduce you to our staff. Roll video. Uhuru, I'm Ali. I'm the store manager at Uhuru Furniture Philly. I'm the uh, Uhuru on the Move coordinator, and I want to introduce our steering committee and our staff. Ali, sales and operational coordinator, and here's my team. Derek. Jesus. Ronnie. I'm Bob. I'm the truck supervisor and the Uhuru on the Move uh, team leader. And here's my team. Chuck. Edward. Ronnie. I'm Ruby, I am the marketing and NTU coordinator, and here's my team. I'm Renee, I'm the donor development and outreach coordinator. Monica. Joe. Alex. And I'm Amir, donations administrator. And we are relentless! For our next slide. So after 28 years, 2021 was the Huru Furniture Philly's best year ever. Our gross income in 2021 was a 24% increase over our prior best year, which was 2016. It was a 62% increase over 2019, and it was a 58% increase over 2020. What house is possible? Aren't businesses going under during COVID? How did that happen? By relentlessly going to the people and diversifying building from the party's political influence and carrying out Deputy Chair Onizene's mandates. Next slide. Major factors for the growth of Uhuru Furniture in Philly in 2021 were, the party and APDF show what African self-determination looks like, especially through Black Power Blueprint and the store itself. We built a strong steering committee with powerful African leadership and every member shoulders major areas of work. We diversified and um, built Uhuru on the Move, a full service moving company, a whole new APDF institution. Due to the crisis of imperialism, other businesses went under, but not Uhuru Furniture, which is part of the ascendancy of the African working class building a liberated economy. Africans and others are looking for solutions to the deepening economic and political crisis of the system. People consciously support APDF and black owned businesses and seek out Uhuru Furniture to donate, shop, and volunteer. We carried out the strategy of relationship building through winning donations from our many shoppers and building the donor development team. Next slide. Meet the Uhuru Furniture Steering Committee. Party members, Bob and Ali. Key to the growth of Uhuru Furniture in 2021 has been Uhuru on the Move, the Uhuru Movement's first full service moving company. Bob brings over 25 years of experience to Uhuru on the move. He leads and trains a professional team. Ali Hutley leads the sales and operations team that moves and sells all the furniture daily. Ali organizes the community to shop and donate and to bring all their friends and family to support APDF. Ali also leads Buy Black Power. Next slide. Our steering committee members, Amir Farrington, donation administrator, and Renee Nassar, donor development, business development, and outreach coordinator. Amir's work is critical to UFC, making a huge leap in income in 2021. He has professionalized the donations intake, shortened our response time to donors, and coordinates the daily schedule for both our trucks. Renee leads the donor development and appreciation program and team under AOBS leadership. Renee also leads community outreach and the relationship with businesses, donors. She coordinates the UFC boost at the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace. Next slide. Steering committee members, Ruby Gillison, marketing, in, marketing into you and live shows coordinator. Allison Haney, manager. Yuhuru on the move and Enzo, Enzo coordinator. Ruby has brought many UFC friends and supporters into the live shows and they bring their friends, family and skills. She leads NTU and the marketing team that produces social media promotions, flyers and videos and has won considerably media coverage in 2021. The manager's work has been key in 2021 in hiring and training new team members 
growing Yahoo on the move and leading the mighty steering committee in all areas of the world. Next slide. We are winning our community to a deeper level of participation and unity with APDF. The political climate has been deeply influenced by the party. More people come to Uhuru Furniture who articulate political support for black community economic development. Everyone is asked to make an extra donation and over 1300 people donated at the sales desk in 2021. Next slide. Finally, we were able to put that chair out there into practice and launch a Uhuru on a move. We got a second truck and wrapped it with a beautiful Uhuru on a move logo. We were able to do most of our own deliveries and carry out over 30 moving jobs in 2021. We got we get most jobs from the stores customers from the store customers and word of mouth. So we know we can build and expand it. Our goal is to at least double this number in 2022. Next slide. With Nate, Edwin, Chuck, Carlos, Ronnie, and others, we have a great team. We run into the same hiring issues as in Oakland and Nashville. So every man on the team is, is trained politically and in the best practices. Next slide. All our clients were ecstatic about our team services. Everyone gave us their picture and, and testimony. Next slide. Here's a testimony uh, from Zach and Rebecca. Moving with the Huru was an easy choice to make. No other moving company has larger compassionate goals beyond profit and also has such professional and helpful workers. No other company will have been so accommodating to our needs. We highly recommend them. And from Melissa, in need of professional courtesy and affordable moving, look no further. We were so fortunate to find a Huru moving. They were beyond awesome. Next slide. We increased our Enzo products and organized volunteers to paint pieces in addition to our professional artists. Bridget, a brilliant seamstress who makes our pillows and masks and Carter, a talented artist who paints the furniture, including custom painted pieces. Next slide. It made a huge impact on our sales in 2021 to have consistent quantity and quality furniture donations all year round under Amir's leadership. Next slide. Volunteers are the back, backbone of Uhuru Furniture and participate in every aspect of the work, you know, live shows, social media, Enzo, outreach, operations to sales assistant. Alan first volunteered when he was in high school and came back with 10 friends from college. Some people that we hired, some people that we hired started off as volunteers. Next slide. We established the donor appreciation and development team led by Renee. This team implements the science led by ABOS, AOBS to deepen our relationship with furniture and cash donors. We train staff to engage with customers, donors, and friends about APDF. Next slide. Live shows have become another important spin-off of Uhuru Furniture this year. We go live twice a week and have produced over 90 shows and walkthroughs to increase engagement with our base. We have weekly volunteer co-hosts and our own theme song by Renda Fearington. Next slide. Here is a short video of our live shows. Roll the video. In on it. This is number 33, and this is number 34. Because if you don't, you're never gonna get enough this time. My pillow, so you better get in on it because I see two patterns I don't have. I'm just telling you. So, the shop at Yuhu back in 1990 that might tell you some of you my age. <laughs> So um, I've always found it to be a really nice place to shop and a pleasant experience. Every time I walk in the door, they always treated me like a rock star and I feel like one right now. I'm a volunteer. I've been a part of Yuhuru family for eight years now. It's got beautiful. 
beautiful detail. I mean, the piping. You got tuck the pillows. This is, and nail heads. Nail heads all around on the bottom, right here. on the side, and Looking in here. the back. This is the kind of sofa that you don't want to put up against the wall. You know? No. Next slide. <clears throat> Deputy Chair. Deputy Chair relaunched by Black Power, led from Yuhuru Furniture Philly. We formed a team led by myself with Bub and King. We produced a setup startup kit for new participants. We made a new display for all the movement, beautiful products, hung a banner in front of the store and held a successful holiday sale. Next slide. We participated with a Huru Solidarity Movement in the most successful Giving Tuesday campaign ever to raise resources for the Black Power Blueprint Community Basketball Court in St. Louis. Uhuru Philly, uh, Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles Philly won donations and hosted a segment for the 24 hour telethon. We produced a video to reach out to other people who love basketball. And here it is. Next slide. Bro video. Hi, I'm Derek Bob Myers. I work at Uhuru Furniture an economic development project of the African People Education and Defense Fund, led by owners of Nick Yesitella. Basketball, to me, personally, like coming up, that was just a way of life. That's when family was family, when I was coming up. Kept me out of trouble. I just was looking forward to it, and it excited me, and I was good. And I was getting recruited by all the top schools of the country. And I signed with Florida State, 1990-91. I played on national TV. Myers gets one. Myers says, hey, who said I can't handle this pressure? Derek Myers, JC All-American. That's out in front of the big guys. A community center basketball court, that's what children need. They need, like, some type of stability, especially in a, in a devastated area as St. Louis itself. This will be much more than a basketball court. It will be a program to develop and uplift the black community. APEDF has already purchased the property and demolished a condemned building on the site. This will be a basketball program for kids and adults with lighting, running water, bleachers, a fence around it, and organized training and games. If you love basketball like I do, please make a donation today. I donate $100 and her. Next slide. So that's what we've been doing in 2021, and we invite you to come and join us in 2022. Next slide. Uhuru. So where is Uhuru Furniture going this year? Our first mandate moving forward is to promote APEDF and Uhuru Furniture and building relationships, taking advantage of this political period to its fullest. We will do this by having more politicized marketing and more visual representation of APEDF inside and outside the Uhuru Furniture Store. We will also do this by focusing on relationship building, especially through grants, donor development, the live shows, and the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade Program. Next slide. Our second mandate moving forward is to ensure the uniform development of both stores. We will do that by building subcommittees of the National Steering Committee with representatives from each store. The first subcommittee will focus on developing our grants capacity. Ali and Stephanie will lead the subcommittee. The next will be the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade Program and Recruitment, and Stephanie and Ruby will lead that subcommittee. The next is donor development, led by Janine and Renee, and the final subcommittee will be an HR and hiring subcommittee led by Allie and Stephanie. Each team will create a POA by March and will report to the National Steering Committee monthly. Each subcommittee will also build mass teams. Next slide. So our third mandate is to switch our POS system to Square and start selling online. Janine is coordinating this with Renee and Amir. We're onboarding with Square in February, setting up the POS and inventory switch in March and building the e-commerce e website with Square and with shipping options in April and going live in May. 
fourth mandate is to build Uhuru on the move with a promotional campaign in Philly to build and train the team and double the jobs that we did in 21. Fifth mandate is to build out our new warehouse in Oakland with grand openings and to develop the team and hold sales. Sixth is to continue to develop our financial systems according to the APDF protocols. And our seventh mandate is to develop and promote our spin-offs, Enzo, Buy Black Power Products, and the live shows. So that concludes our report from Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles to the party plenary. Forward to the eighth party Congress in Azania, Uhuru. Next slide. Furniture and Collectibles, Philadelphia and Oakland. What a powerful, powerful report. Uhuru means freedom. I love that song. So we're going to keep it moving because we're a little bit behind, Conrad. So um, our next up is uh, three African internationalist uh, comrades uh, to take on the Buy Black Power campaign. So that's going to be Ali Hutley, King L, and Bud Derek Myers. You guys are up. Uhuru. My name is Ali, and I am the chairperson of Buy Black Power. And I want to thank you for coming to this presentation. The title of our presentation is What is Buy Black Power? Revolutionizing the African Business Community. Next slide. I would like to salute Chairman O'Malley Yasatella and Deputy Chair Owner Janae Yasatella for their leadership. Next slide. Man, all right, all right. What is what is Buy Black Power? Buy Black Power is a powerful campaign of economic development in the African business community, centered on the idea of concentrated economic power by developing an alternative to the capitalist economy that will serve the interests of the African working class, uplifting our community and building political power. Next slide. Yo, that sound dope. But well, what's wrong with capitalism? Next slide. That's a great question. There's a lot that's wrong with capitalism. Capitalism is a mode of exchange and production that was born out of colonialism. Next slide. Colonialism is the practice of a foreign invading force occupying a country or land, exploiting its people, and stealing their resources for the political and economic advantage of the settler occupier. Next slide. The assault on Africa and the theft of land from indigenous people that came to be known as the New World 600 years ago is responsible for the misery and oppression experienced by African and other colonized people today. Capitalism was developed through that process. Next slide. Let's listen to the chairman of the African People's Socialist Party summing up the significance of building by Black Power programs. Next slide. Learning from our colonial capitalists, we will buy from each other and sell to everyone. Our slogan will be buy Black Power. This takes us beyond the petty bourgeois neo-colonialist demand for African people to buy black, which might, which might profit them, but promises nothing to our people as a, as a means of breaking out of the colonial prison we have inhabited for the last several centuries. Buy black power does not only serve to promote our movement products, but will encourage 
other merchants within our colony to promote and develop an anti-colonial commercial approach as well. The office of the deputy chair must also examine the possibility, and I have to expedite this, of using the Uhura houses and our local offices in each region within the U.S. and everywhere else possible as distribution points for our food products. This is especially true of Uhura foods and pies. In other words, our economic activities will expand exponentially through utilization of these regional hubs and the initiation of local distribution points. These products for distribution must include shea butter from Anwo, clothing from Uzi, clothing uh, from Zenzele consignment, and Planet Uhuru apparel from the African People's Solidarity Committee. The Burning Spear newspaper and all our books, audio, and other visual products must also be distributed from these sites. The Office of the Deputy Chair will have the responsibility of providing overall leadership for all the economic activity outlined here. It must develop its own system of training and support for all the economic work and provide strategic direction leading to the creation of an independent anti-colonial international socialist economy of liberated Africa and African people. We want to create independent economic activity that is not simply inspired by an aspiration of individual wealth but that recognizes itself as a part of the struggle for self-determination. The office of the deputy chair can begin training programs for Africans to initiate and participate in successful economic ventures as part of the overall anti-colonial economic work. Our Buy Black Pro uh, Power programs will help to inspire our community from its deepest, most oppressed and exploited sectors uh, to political consciousness of self-reliance. This, along with all our community and neighborhood gardens, will begin the process of generalized, self-initiated economic development on the terms of the people instead of the predatory colonial merchants, bankers, and their political minions. That's some heavy stuff, man. To be honest with you, I never liked, I never really liked capitalism. But I love doing business, so how do I get down? Next slide. Well, if you don't like capitalism, you're already down. Next slide. Roll clip. All right. But to make you official member, to make you official member, break out your laptop or phone. Go to www.buyblackpower.org. Click on become a member, make a $25 payment. Fill out the membership form and tell us about your business, products, and services, and you'll head back from us within 24 hours. It's that easy. Now let my partner tell you what comes with that membership. Next slide. Thank you, brother. Your membership comes with a Buy Black Power starter kit to help you kickstart this program by promoting it with your customers and other Black-owned businesses. This kit consists of the following. Next slide. Five Buy Black Power buttons that can be sold or gifted as an incentive to your customers so they can proudly display their support for this program and spread the word. Next slide. It also comes with five bumper stickers to make your ride a powerful advertising space on the go. Next slide. The kit also comes with five tabletop or window stickers to display on your storefront window, laptop, or desk. Next slide. The kit also comes with 10 beautifully printed double-sided brochures and full color to hand out to other black businesses that wish to learn more about the program, including how to join and donate. Next slide. And last, but definitely not least, the kit comes with five Bernie Spear newspapers, the oldest Black Power newspaper in continuous print for over 50 years. You can sell those for a small profit and even become a regular distributor. Next slide. When you buy Buy Black Power, Pro when you join Buy Black Power program, you're joining a business community that will work collectively to cross promote and sell each other's products through our website, our social media platform, live shows, and, buy, and Black Power 96.3 FM. 
You are looking at two examples of buy black power members in action. All power promotions is selling their beautiful one on pecan hand crocheted shawls, hats, and other items, and at the same time promoting and selling the colonnades, which which is the the long the, the line of health and beauty products. These two members are sell, also selling items from two other members, Yahuru Foods and Pies and the Bernie Spear newspaper. This is how we build black economic power. Next slide. Here's a sampling of, of buy black power members starting at the top from left to right. A rural furniture and collectibles, the hub of the Northern region driven by African self-determination, serving the community for 27 years. Enzo, a line of beautifully handcrafted African style furniture and accessories sold at UFC. A rural foods and pies, our longest running economic development project, cranking out delicious pies since 1989 to build the independent African economy. One Africa, one nation marketplace, bringing together hundreds of African vendors, 18 years in the making. Uhuru planted reparations and apparel, forwarding the culture of white reparations to African people under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Art and Soul, a cultural oasis in West Philadelphia, selling fine and wearable art that will speak to your soul. Zenzelay Kansami, a space for the community to organize politically and co-sign handmade original African clothing, accessories, art, small household and personal care products, marrying the political and economic. Pyroglyphic Studio, a one-stop art studio for hire covering all independent and commercial products like comic book illustrations, character design, storyboard, logo design, graphic design, and fashion. The colonies, hair and body, a line of personal care products that is the main economic development project of the African National Women's Organization. Uzi, custom clothing, an economic institution of impedum that competes against uh, capitalism as an economic system by building under the leadership of the African working class revolutionary vanguard. Next slide. You heard us talking about them. Now it's time to see the beautiful products of our Buy Black Power members. Delicious pies to feast on. African style furniture to decorate your home. Natural health and beauty products to keep your skin and hair healthy. African handcrafts that show the genius of our people. Next slide. African style fabrics. Stylish handbags, essential oils for your body or home, organic teas and herbs to keep you strong and healthy, politicized apparel, unique handcrafted jewelry, and so much more. The only thing missing is your product. Next slide. All right, cool. I'm definitely doing this. I am all signed up and excited to receive the starter kit, but I still have a question. What does this all mean? You know, how does it really work in the big picture? Congratulations on joining. And great question. I can break it down like this. So you're running a Black-owned business, selling your products and services? Surely you heard the slogan, buy Black, right? At best, all that does is barely keep a business afloat, making little to no difference in the African community. That's just one reason the buy Black slogan is inadequate. Next slide. Another key reason why buy black is prom problematic is that it can, be, it can be used by colonizers, corporations to target our community with misleading, misleading ads to exploit us even more. Sneaky, right? Well, now that we know what doesn't work, where do we go from here? That's where buy black power comes into the picture. Next slide. Buy Black Power means concentrated wealth and prosperity within our own communities. Buy Black Power means negating the white power structure, the opportunity to co-opt our strategy for self-determination. Buy Black Power is pooling our resources together in action, not just words, to strengthen our capacity for wider promotion, 
distribution and manufacturing of our own goods and services. When you put it that way, can you imagine any large white owned corporation like Amazon or Google saying buy black power? Emphatically no. And no, we're not big like them, no, are we hating on them. But in time, we will be the place to go for black owned businesses because we represent the future. We're relentless and revolutionary. So welcome to the Buy Black Power community where we buy from each other and sell to everyone. Next slide. All right, I get it now. Say no to Buy Black and yes to Buy Black Power. Yohuru, next slide. If you, if, you, if you like what you see here and you want to be a part of building this thing up, Join our Uhuru Movement NTU Brigade and bring your skills to the, the Buy Black Power campaign. We need video graphics, graphic designers, web developers, content creators, writers, artists. And if you know a plumber and a delivery driver, there's a place for them too. To link up with us, you can go to your website, buyblackpower.org. Also connect and follow, follow our social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Next slide. We may not be Amazon, and that's a good thing because we're from the streets. Whose streets? Our streets. So we're going to leave it like that. But before we go, word on the street is, next slide. Next, next slide. Bye, Black Power. We'll be going live in 2022. Yes, live. Next step, let's see. Every last Sunday of the month, starting March 27th, we will be going live from the beautiful Yohuru Furniture Store in Philly. We will be interviewing African back by Black Power businesses from all over the world. We will be asking you how they got started promoting their products. So come join us each month and support your own. Next slide. Thank you for your time. I am Ali Hutley, chairperson of Buy Black Power, and I am an African internationalist. Next slide. I am King L, Buy Black Power co-chair and project director, and I am an African internationalist. Next slide. And I am Bob Myers. I'm an African internationalist and a Buy Black Power membership and recruitment representative. And that concludes our presentation. Oh. 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 King, Ali, and Bob. Y'all doing the damn thing. Oh. 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 Thank you, DC. Oh. We're buying from, we're selling to everyone and buying from everyone, right? That's no, right. All right. That's right. Buying from each other. It's yes. Selling to everyone. So we're going to move, keep it moving, and we're going to bring up the, the mighty, 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 mighty Grant's team. And that's going to be Maureen, Wendy, and Janice. Uhuru, comrades. Uhuru, Deputy Chair. Um, so honored to present the Grant's team report to this plenary. Our theme is Concentrating Economic Power for African Redemption. And I want to salute you again, Deputy Chair, for that profound political report. And I'm absolutely blown away by all the reports of this committee. Uhuru, next. So we salute the chairman who has fought relentlessly for more than 50 years to return every ounce of stolen resources to African people for the benefit of African people. And we salute the deputy chair who's made tremendous strides in developing every aspect of the economic work of the Uhura movement. She relentlessly converts the understandings of the chairman's political reports into concrete practice, seizing territory and resources. It is our honor to work under her direct leadership. Next. 
The chairman has said that the party has built the organizational capacity to get grants as an instrument to tr achieve revolution. For years, the party had veered away from grants because the party is fighting always for self-reliance and the leadership of the African working class. As the chairman says, the African petty bourgeoisie gets grants, but no one knows where the money goes. Under Deputy Chair's leadership of the Black Power Blueprint and the party's economic work, the world can see the results of all funding. We are in a new period in which grantors have been forced to focus funds on black organizations. Because of the crisis of imperialism and because of the party's relentlessness, we can say colonialism and African and grant applications that push funders into funding self-determination over charity. Next. Deputy Chair has dubbed this team the Mighty Mighty Grants Team. Our mission is to return the stolen wealth for the economic projects of the Office of Deputy Chair by accessing grant funding, build relationships with donors and grantors, guide other organizations within the movement and grant work, and be accountable to the Office of Deputy Chair through weekly executive team meetings, monthly volunteer meetings, and the Grants Commission. Next. The grants team is led directly by the relentless Deputy Chair Ona Zanae Shatella, developing the programs and priorities for funding. I have the honor of being the chair of this committee and working with Janice as the vice chair and Wendy as the project manager and volunteer coordinator. A big advance in 2021 happened when Leah came on the executive team as a representative of Uhuru Solidarity Movement and the Rec Reparations Legacy Project, which fund Black Power Blueprint projects. Leah does excellent work researching grants. She is an awesome writer, and she made deep political presentations on grants at the Reparations Legacy Project Conference and in the USM Telethon. Uhuru, next slide. Wendy coordinates the Uhuru NTU Volunteer Program on the grants team. We have had many consistent volunteers. We held 13 orientations in 2021, have six new volunteers. Several volunteers have been on the team since 2020, and this is possible because of the consistent supervision and communication from Wendy and the team and because of political education. So we have Ash, who represents the Black Power Blueprint, Barbara, Beatrice, Chess, Kit, Lucas, and Zach. Those are key people on the team right now, and our volunteers love APDF and the programs. One volunteer said, I am extremely impressed with the work that your organization is doing. I am always looking for ways to contribute to economic development and show solidarity with Black and working class communities. Next. Deputy Chair fights for all areas of the movement to realize their own economic capacity. The visionary Deputy Chair called for the creation of the Grants Commission to win and train organizations to fund their programs and projects through grants. This is a significant accomplishment. The Grants Exec Team provides leadership to all organizations to build their grants team, overcome obstacles and intimidation when applying for grants. On the commission is Stephanie from Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles, Hallie from Uhuru Planet, Leah from Uhuru Solidarity Movement and Reparations Legacy Project, Sandy from Burning Spear Media and Black Power 96, and Mwazi from All African People's Development and Empower Project, Tiffany from Uhuru Furniture and the One African, One Nation Market in Philadelphia, and Fofit from International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. These leaders are invested in the commission, recognizing the value of forming their own grants team and using the timelines for reviews by the executive team. And I think next, I'm gonna turn it over to project manager, Wendy. Uhuru, thank you, Maureen. So our 2021 mandates were to get funding for the Uhuru Jiko Kitchen and the African Independence Workforce Program, among other things. We did get funding to complete the workforce housing and we also work with the Office of Deputy Chair and the Farmer's Market Manager to launch the Farmer's Market in St. Louis and administer the USDA grant. And we did already mention Leah is working with us from the Reparations Legacy Project in our exec team. And we've also been continuing to investigate new stimulus funds, and we continue to build our grants team by recruiting volunteers using the NTU volunteer process. Next slide. So 
Our huge victory for 2021 was that we won $90,882 in grant funding. We submitted 33 grants, which is an average of two to three grants submitted per month. 15 of those were funded, one is still pending. And we had, um, APEDF had personal connections with four grantors and these relationships help us get the awards. So five grants were from previous grantors. One grant we got through a personal phone call and USM won their first grant, the camp grant to the basketball court. Next slide. Some of the projects have been completed and others will be completed soon, including the mural for the uh, building next to the One Africa, One Nation Farmer's Market, the Halloween Festival at the Farmer's Market from Square, uh, plants and trees in the Gary Brooks Community Garden, appliances for the African Independence Workforce Program, reusable pie crates for Uhuru, um, for Uhuru Pies in Oakland, and the Enzo Artist Workshops at Uhuru Furniture in Oakland, as well as the basketball court. Next slide. Our team is more than just, you know, about writing grants and funneling money to projects. We are actually working with deputy chair to develop, implement, and administer the programs, assist with branding and logos, and build program partnerships and more. An example is with the experience and systems from the Uhuru market in Philadelphia, we assisted in launching year one of the three-year grant for the St. Louis One Africa, One Nations Farmers Market. We received a grant to hold workshops to train community members to become vendors and conducted a community, a community survey, as well as creating a vendor handbook with all the how-tos of becoming a successful market vendor. And we secured a grant that gave us an EBT processor. So in this year's markets, people in the, in the community can use their food stamps or SNAP to purchase fresh produce. Next slide. And under the leadership of Deputy Chair and the Black Power Blueprint um, Projects team, the grants team developed several programs in the process of writing grants. The grant applications are now the basis for those programs and are a template for future grant applications. And the strength in this process is that we create clear objectives for each program, we identify ways to measure success, and also for continual assessment. Next slide. So Deputy Chair, with her vision, has created another institution of the party. We work with the yearly plan of action to give us direction and response and accountability. And we have a, been able to maintain weekly executive committee meetings after meeting daily during the 2020 People's War Campaign. We have regular monthly volunteer meetings and grant commission meetings, and that provides our full structure. In 2021, we also created a comprehensive grants manual, and this has been instrumental in training all the areas and instituting protocols with timelines to have grants reviewed by the exec committee um, before submitting. And we've referred grants to movement organizations and reviewed six grants from all areas of the party's work. Departments and organizations on the grants commission are making plans to build out their own grants teams to research and write grants. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Janice. Next slide. Thank you, Wendy. Um, an important victory is that we're getting expertise from trained professionals to move APDF to a higher level of organization. This will help APDF function better, grow and get larger grants and investment than ever before. We're learning as we go. We have applied for grants called capacity building in the nonprofit world. For the Uhuru movement, it's building the capacity of the African working class and the party to govern. We came to understand that what we needed is called a comprehensive capital campaign for Black Power Blueprint, not just grants for individual programs. This is especially important given that most regular grants do not allow for investment in property, construction, renovation, or equipment. <clears throat> Next slide, please. We met with the Agricultural Institute of Marin for consultation on starting the farmer's market and also about their strategy and resources for our capital campaign. We're building relationships and working with the Black Power Blueprints projects team to offer tours to funders. Maintaining ongoing communication is key to building relationships and repeat funding. 
We were awarded a free subscription to Catch a Fryer, which is providing us with highly skilled volunteers to help develop strategies and complex plans for the capital campaign and to do marketing and promotion of Black Power Blueprint so more funders and donors can be won. We salute the highly successful USM Giving Tuesday Reparations Telethon. That was actually a mini capital campaign, completing the $140,000 funding needed for the St. Louis Community Control Basketball Court. Next slide, please. Resistance to the murder of George Floyd ushered in a political period where corporations and foundations have been pushed to make funds available for black organizations and businesses, as well as for grassroots organizing. But even with this shift from traditional charity focused grant of opportunities, we came up against gatekeepers controlling the resources that were intended for black organizations. We had to challenge the denial of funds to APDF by the parasitic white St. Louis Community Foundation, who were chosen to distribute millions of dollars of black community initiatives grant funding. We also saw a petty bourgeois black organization that was acting as gatekeeper of grant funds they were tasked to distribute. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Our biggest challenge is that we need more volunteers. We need writers who can take existing proposals and tweak them to, for new grants or write grant templates for new projects. We need a budget coordinator just to work on the budgets for each grant. We need a dedicated volunteer coordinator so Wendy can just be the project manager, which is a huge job. We need a promotions coordinator to announce and promote the funds we are awarded. Promotions is a really important area we need volunteers to take on, to update our websites, get articles in the media, post announcements on social media, and create short thank you videos for our funders. Next slide. Our 2022 mandates moving forward are to one, complete the capital campaign plan, which means developing the case statement that we have already in progress, and then developing the campaign website and marketing materials. Two, to do promotions and media that publicizes APDF and our funders, and that shows community involvement and success of the Black Power Blueprint programs. We also need to develop branding for the grants team. Our biggest mandate is to continue to recruit. We will also continue to build relationships with funders and potential funders, especially those locally in St. Louis. And lastly, continue to work with the Office of the Deputy Chair to implement the programs and administer the grants we have been awarded. Next slide. So if you'd like to volunteer with the Mighty Mighty Grants team, please contact us at grants at APEF apedf.org. And this concludes the um, report from the Mighty Mighty Grants team, Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru. Thank you so much, Maureen, Wendy, and Janice from the Mighty Mighty Grants team. You see why we call them the Mighty Mighty Grants team, right? So comrades, we're gonna keep it moving. Our last and final report is the Black Power Blueprint projects. So I would like to bring up uh, Kitty Riley, Abdul Muhammad. Uh, Raya would not be able to be in this um, with us. And that's it. Uhuru. Thank you so much, Deputy Chair. And how absolutely the powerful reports that have come. This is the Black Power Blueprint on the Relentless Road to Dual and Contending Power. Next slide. It's an honor to present the Black Power Blueprint Project's 2022 report to the APSP plenary. Relentless 50 years of leadership towards African redemption. Presenters are Deputy Chair Ona Zane, the leadership of the Black Power Blueprint and architect of the Black Power Blueprint. Abdullah Mohammed, Facilities Coordinator, Workdays, and NTU, and myself. I want to salute uh, Project Vice Chair, Raya Fogarty, who could not be a presenter today. Next slide. Is Abdullah on? Okay. 
So we want to go ahead and salute 50 years of this profound leadership of Chairman Amalia Chatella. The chairman came into Ferguson, St. Louis immediately following the murder, police murder of Mike Brown in 2014 to organize the African working class who resistance had heard around the world. The chairman marched with the people and began organizing for revolution to take it beyond protests. The chairman built the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement in St. Louis and sent deputy chair in to locate a building for the Uhura House. Next slide. Saluting Deputy Chair Onazene Ishitela, the architect and leader of the Black Power Blueprint that is transforming North St. Louis through renovation, economic development, and political power by and for the African community. Next slide. In June of 2017, Deputy Chair arrived in St. Louis, identified the building for the Uhura House in the Quabba Hall, and the rest is history. Carrying out the mantra, we're on a mission. We're taking territory and we're not turning back. DC hit the ground running. Next slide. Seizing territory was the number one goal. The party began taking back the African community's properties that was stolen through colonial plunder under the guise of back taxes or abandoned by white flight following the Black Power Blueprint of the 1960s. Properties were viciously seized or left to rot by the city, hoarding them in its land bank for future corporate and white developers and neo-colonial politicians. Next slide. Properties were secured to build out a Hurujiko commercial kitchen and bakery cafe and a fourplex apartment for future housing for Africans returning from the colonial prisons that will be participating in the African Independence Workforce Program. GECO is the size needed for a huge production kitchen for expanding Black Star Industries of Hulu Foods and Pies throughout the Midwest and the country. Next slide. The Black Power Blueprint campaign was initiated. Funding webinars launched and demolition begins to make way to build institutions and programs Brick by brick, the Black Power Blueprint is a project funded directly by the people. Next slide. There is nothing like this happening in the world. The Black Power Blueprint is about rebuilding a community for political power in our own hands. Development for and by the African working class. This has completely changed the game. This is the party's blueprint for African community, economic and political power. Next slide. Once the party installed the 50 foot flagpole flying the bold 25 foot red, black and green flag, our community was completely uplifted and united in African self-determination. Next slide. We are building dual and continuing power. This is a strategy that was created by chairman back in 1977. Chairman Omali Ishitela writes, and I quote, when we talk about the struggle for self-reliance for economic development, we are talking about the ability to produce and reproduce material life that negates the colonial economy. Next slide. The party takes all political space, including the electro uh, electoral arena. The party ran candidates for wards 21 and ward three automatic seats. In the election culminating in 2021, we organized deep within the North Side African working class community who for the first time hears our interests being fought for. Next slide. Thousands of issues of the, uh, the broadsheet, Blake St. Louis Speaks were printed and distrib distributed. Press conferences held, the doors of Uhura House opened to the community. MP on President, President Columbia Antoinette wins 39% of the vote in Ward 3 against a neo-colonial family dynasty of several generations. Next slide. Black St. Louis Speaks gives a voice to the Black community. It gives a platform to discuss issues facing us and is supported 100% by the people. Next slide. Seeing the deep community base built in the Hura movement, politicians come courting. 
It is now the Uhura movement setting the term for the relationship. And now the community is fully empowered to wage our own struggle with the neo-colonialists. Next slide. The party and the Uhura movement joined with thousands of Palestinians demanding the total liberation of Palestine after the latest bombing of Gaza. Colonialism must go from St. Louis to Palestine. Next slide. This is the context of the work of the Black Power Blueprint projects. Saluting the Black Power Blueprint Steering Committee leadership body, Deputy Chair, Ona Zanea Shetela, overall political leadership, property acquisition, and the Black Power Blueprint programs. Myself as Black Power Blueprint projects coordinator and volunteer workdays. Sun Lele, Uhuru NTU Volunteer Brigade Coordinator. Abdullah, Black Power Blueprint Tours and Facilities. Raya, uh, Projects Vice Chair and Volunteer Coordinator. And Chairwoman Penny Hess, who leads our promotions team. Next slide. I also wanna really salute our Black Power Blueprint Projects Committee. You know, that, you know, like Raya, Allison. Allison is our project manager from New York City. Mr. Gary, who we, the party holds up as you know, a real beacon of leadership for the Black Power Blueprint. Abdullah, Zan Lile, Christina, who's going to be, Christina, Talia, Becky, Tina, Lisa, and Ash. Next slide. And a special acknowledgement of the volunteers that are stepping up and in training to be team leaders and project coordinators. Christina, the basketball court, Tony, NTU Promotions Coordinator. Ash, Brightside Grant in working with Mr. Gary to plan the third year planting of the vegetable garden. Tina, Research Team. Allison, Project Manager. Becky, Research Team. Chair, Amir, Black Power Square Project. Uhuru. We're also saluting over 100 volunteers who participated in 2021 and forwarded the Black Power Blueprint Project. Next slide. No, that's the one. Oh, thank you. Okay. The Gary Brooks Black Power Community Garden, the One Africa, One Nation Market, special events and interior work on the fourplex for the African Independence Workforce Housing. These are just some of the volunteer opportunities pictured here are Amir, Muhammad, Abdullah, Tara, Murray, Rebecca, Mikkel, and Bob and Becky from Wisconsin bringing a rain barrel to the garden. Uhuru. Next slide. We love and appreciate all our amazing volunteers and the invaluable contributions you make. Tina, Christina, Ash, Darian, Daniel, Abdullah, Pam, Diana, Jim, Bob, Becky, and Randy. Next slide. Here is Lady James. Ash, Christina, Kitty, James, Connor, Casey, Jeremy, Toby, Darian, Nancy Freeze, and Rachel from Henry Blinds in the fourplex. Allison from Her Furniture Philly got in the garden watering and nurturing the vegetables while contributing here in St. Louis to the One Africa One Nation market. We put everybody to work. Everybody always wants to be in the garden. Next slide. The Black Power Blueprint built a relationship with our first community at the Washington University, who came in force to volunteer in the garden. Also shown is Mr. Garrity with Mr. Wendell, longtime neighbor and friend who walks by the garden every day. Next slide. We're on slide 24, comrade. Thank you. Yeah. Rural comrades, scores of volunteers came out to participate in the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market from set up to breakdown, participated in the program, assisted in children's activities and conducted workshops. Next slide. Volunteers brought their family members to enjoy the market and some even came as far as Philadelphia, Portland, Chicago and Los Angeles. Next slide. Volunteers were so inspired by the leadership of the party that brings a vision of the future of African liberation and self-determination. Next slide. 
saluting the chairman's keynote presentation at the Halloween Festival Market, the community volunteers who judged the Halloween costume contest and all the volunteers that participated in making this community event happen. This is a true and historic people's movement. Next slide. Joining teams to becoming team leaders. We are consolidating and developing volunteers through our N2U program with regularly scheduled meetings, political education with an African internationalist perspective and volunteer work days. Next slide. Volunteers deepen their unity by meeting and working with members of the party and the Huru movement. Next slide. Black Power Blueprint initiated the NTU Volunteer Recognition Program this past year and held the third annual St. Louis Martin Luther King Day of Service with a webinar featuring Chairman Omalia Shatella, put on by Impedum President Colin Baye and Danette, NTU coordinators on Lele and Black Power Blueprint Projects Abdullah Muhammad. And we have pictured here some of our, just some of our volunteers who mailed back their appreciation certificate to show them with it. It's really uh, a great start to our volunteer program. Next slide. On our last big work day, we celebrated Mr. Gary's birthday at Aquaba Hall after working in the garden as a whole full team. Members of four generations of Mr. Gary's family joined in celebration. He is held in high esteem for his leadership, vision, and struggle to make the Black Power Blueprint a destination. We love Mr. Gary. Next slide. In 2021, APEDF received the funds from the facade grant and installed the outdoor massaging messaging sign facing traffic coming down West Florissant Avenue, announcing the One Africa, One Nation markets and Halloween festival. And a new awning was installed over the door of the offices. Next slide. Resources were raised to install our water source for the garden from the city's main water line. Next slide. Electrical work was completed and the fourplex and new security screen doors were installed. Next slide. Black Power Blueprint inspires community to invest. Pictured here is the building across the street from the Huru House. Once neighbors experienced the uplifting of the community by the Black Power Blueprint, many determined to stay in their homes and others were inspired to develop commercial and residential properties. Next slide. Work has started on the property next door to the Huru House and will be renovated as a mixed use commercial and office space and stays in the community. Next slide. We continued the Black Power Blueprint tours in 2021 and conducted 12 tours. They deepen unity and win volunteers and donors. They were attended by NTU volunteers, funding entities, banks, businesses, foundations, regional and local donors. Next slide. Members of community organizations toured such as Solidary Economy, NPDUM, and Reparations Legacy Project Contacts. Significant participants were African farmers and growers who opened up the community of black growers for social justice to the One Africa, One Nation farmers market. Next slide. Adhering to COVID mandates, Ahura House remained a political, cultural, and economic hub. It hosted pre-tour meetings, electoral campaign events, vendor training, and was the staging ground for setup and breakdown for the farmers markets. Next slide. The second annual Gary Brooks Black Power Community Garden was planted. Thanks to volunteer Ash, APEDF was awarded our second Bright Side Grant. We planted a butterfly garden, more flowers and trees and shrubs. The outdoor venue hosted a community twilight reception to kick off the 2021 One Africa, One Nation market season. Next slide. In June, the USDA funded One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market kicked off with monthly markets through October with the spectacular Halloween Festival Market. APEDF and the Black Power Blueprint have harnessed access to food and are providing the opportunity for economic commerce by, by and for the African community. Next slide. 
Deputy Chair involved everyone in the party's work in St. Louis and the region to make this first year a success. We went to the people, won farmers and African growers, and developed all systems. West Florissant and Alice Avenue is now a center of joy, African culture, and economic power. Next slide. In preparing for the mural installation, the project's team created an application process for artists, vetted 21 muralists, and selected four top candidates. The Mighty Grants team won a grant from the Gateway Foundation. And the incredible donors holding Facebook birthday fundraisers for APDF and the Black Power Blueprint contributed the bulk of resources. Supporters winning their friends and family all invested in this inspiring project. And now I turn it over to our deputy chair for the spring explosion. Oh, thank you, Kitty. We will be kicking off the Black Power Blueprint 2022 Spring Explosion. Next slide. And I'm not talking about the latest 2022 fashions of the week. Next slide. But we will be kicking off the 2022 Spring Explosion with, next slide, our African planting of the Gary Brooks Black Power Community Garden will be in its third year annual season. We have 10 vegetable garden boxes, flowers and trees will be uh, bloomed and a young apple and peach tree will bear fruit. Next slide. Next, we will be relaunching the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market. We will now be holding weekly markets. We are connecting with the black farmers and growers to bring healthy food to the neighborhood. We will be growing food in our own garden for free distribution providing vending opportunities for small businesses and bringing the community together with culture and more. Next slide. We raised the resources to complete this project through donations and a grant. We are creating a beautiful destination location, part of the Black Power Blueprint Gary Brooks Community Garden. The mirror will be 32, 32 feet wide by 12 feet high, which is 384 square feet. Next slide. We had four top muralist candidates. Next slide. The first was Kenneth uh, Randall out of St. Louis. And this is some of his um, drawings. Next slide. Uh, we had Fela from Skin, Skin Wards, Detroit. Uh, what says it better than Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Next slide. And then we had, uh, we also love the work of uh, Santa Alia out of Cleveland, Ohio. And this is some of her work. Next slide. But when it came down to it, we chose the lovely Jamie, the artist from Birmingham, Alabama. And this is some of Jamie's work. So we look forward to it. Next slide. This is Jamie, the artist out of Birmingham. And uh, I just spoke with Dan Jamie on uh, on Friday, and she's uh, signed the contract, and she's getting ready to um, do us a, a a demo of what the the marketplace is going to look like on the wall. So we're really really excited. Next slide. Next, we will be uh, we will be our community basketball court. The lots have been purchased, building demolished and cleared. The basketball court is only two blocks from the Ahura House Community Center. There are only one in four St. Louis parks that actually have a basketball court. In fact, the city of St. Louis removed courts in four parks in predominantly white communities, reinforcing the city's racial divide. Not anymore. Next slide. We have the contractors, sports courts, St. Louis and Jason from Release Electric Company is ready to go. We will break ground in the spring. Come summer, we will have the Black Power Community Control Basketball Court. Next slide. We are not stopping there. The Women's Health Program will cont uh, contribute to empowering us to solve many of the life and death struggles we face as African women. Next slide. Did you know a black woman with a college education is at 60% greater risk for maternity death than a white woman with less than a high school education? APDF and the Black Power Blueprint 
will be providing doula training and certification program. Next slide. This program will not only impact the women it serves, but it will train women to be entrepreneurs. Economic empowerment is the foundation of the ability to create the kind of life that we deserve. Working for oneself allows full empowerment because we will be in charge of our own destiny. This program offers a real ground up approach to the community development. As individuals are empowered and work together to empower others in the community, the community becomes self-sufficient. Self-sufficiency reduces stress and provides safety in a way that nothing else does. Next slide. APDF and the Black Power Blueprint closed on this property in 2021. Our ultimate goal is to build a health center in the heart of the most impoverished Black community in North St. Louis. We have the land, we have the program, we have the collaborators. Next slide. We, now ha we have now renovated the fourplex, raised the resources, and now we're ready to furnish, adding appliances and exterior signage. This would include going to Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles in Philly to purchase a truckload of wood furniture. In the Uhuru Furniture, uh, we have our own African line called Enzo, African Designs at Home and Abroad. We will bring some of this African flavor to the African Independence Workforce Program in April. And in May, APDF will tour Jeff Foundation who will be presenting us with a grant in the form of a check for all the appliances in all four apartments. Next slide. APDF is planning the apartment naming and dedication ceremony. This ceremony will be dedicating the African Independence Workforce Program housing to Richard Mafundi Lake, a courageous African freedom fighter and political prisoner. And each apartment will also be dedicated to heroic African political prisoners, Sunniata Kali, Desi X Wood, Matula Shakur, and Shakata, um, Asada Shakur. Next slide. We are not stopping. We are seeking funding for 4007 West Florissant right now. We are researching and developing plans to create retail space built from shipping containers. Next slide. This retail and business center will be called Black Power Square. This complex will provide affordable move-in ready spaces to grow local businesses and build community commerce. Next slide. Okay, there is no stopping us. Our biggest project is built to build out the Hurujiko Bakery Cafe and Commercial Kitchen. We will want to uh, begin the phase, the first phase of this renovation process coming this spring. Next slide. This would include the African Independence Workforce Program that would train African men and women coming out of the colonial prison system. Next slide. To be trained in culinary arts in the food production and catering industries to become their own bosses. Next slide. Here is NBA uh, player Stefan Curry who are uh, furniture, I mean, who are foods and uh, pies, Vice Chair Bakri Olatunje, and who are sweet potato pie this uh, December 20th, 22. This was an incredible way to end 2022. I'm sorry, 2020. It gave us a glimpse of the production process that we see at Uhuru Jiko. The chairman has always had a vision for the party and the African working class controlling the means of production. In 1979, he visited a co op warehouse in Oregon and declared someday this will be ours. The day is near. Uhuru. Next slide. We are asking you to join us today. We need you. We need a project coordinators, electricians, gardeners, join the promotion team, the social media team. We need writers, graphic artists, and a team working with Uhura facilities. Next slide. <laughs> Participate on our NTU volunteer team and bring your skills as a photographer, videographer, and drone camera operator. This powerful project must be documented to let the world know what can, what they can support and, the, and this profound program that can be reproduced in every African working class community. Go to blackpowerblueprint.org. Next slide. 
this is how the Black Power Blueprint is going to go beyond protests, moving towards the capture of real power in the hands of the African community. And how by becoming a member of the Black Power Blueprint, Uhuru NCU Volunteer Brigade Program, you will be a part of changing the world, not just explaining it. Next slide. This is the end of the ODC reports to the 2022 African People's Socialist Party plenary, concentrating economic power for African redemption. Our economic work is revolutionary work. Uhuru comrades. So I'm Uhuru. 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 I'm going to turn it back over to the, to the host of this uh, section. Uhuru, 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 thank you so much for that dynamic report, DC Ona and the Office of the Deputy Chair for your astounding and thorough report. Thank you for showing us a glimpse of independent economic life and what Africans are capable of when we unite and organize. And so now we will be opening it up for discussion, questions and comments. So if you haven't already, please put your um, uh, comments or questions in the chat um, from wherever you're living from, YouTube, Zoom, or Facebook. Um, there were two questions I had already answered on YouTube. Can we, can we have everybody unmute that's in my office uh, and show their faces? Is that possible? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Everybody from the, the reports, if you gave a report, please unmute and show your face. Yeah, so on YouTube, there were questions regarding um, if there were branches in Orlando, Florida. Um, someone had asked, um, I'm in South Africa, how can I join? These questions were already answered, but it just goes to show that how people are interested in becoming a part of this. Um, on Zoom, Mwazi commented, fabulous comrades, buy Black Power, love the development on this campaign. Chairman commented, Uhuru comrades, splendid with four exclamation points. Uh, comrade Matum commented, Uhuru, I want to salute all reports this morning. They were all impeccable moving forward. Um, comrade Don Lile commented, I'm so proud to be a part of these projects. This movement has completely changed my life. Uhuru and salute the Office of Deputy Chair and her amazing report. <clears throat> Uh, Casey commented, Uhuru, I'm so excited to see Jamie's completed mural over the Gary Brooks Garden outdoor venue. Um, comrade Angelica commented, all of the self-determined development is just amazing. I will work on getting community arts and movement project here in St. Louis to further support a Black Power Blueprint. Um, we received one question on Zoom from Regina. Question is, does the party have any additional plans to fight housing and food scarcity in communities? How does the party support members who are facing these issues? Uhuru, can you repeat that question again? I'm sorry. No problem. Um, she commented, does the party have any additional plans to fight housing and food scarcity in communities? And how does the party support members who are facing these issues? Yeah, well, right now, um, as, as we reported in this report, we have uh, you know obtained a, a USDA grant for the uh, One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market in St. Louis, where we are uh, you know, uh, partnering with black farmers and black growers right now to bring um, food into the north side of St. Louis. Uh, we also are doing backyard gardening uh, through um, APDEP as well as APDF in St. Louis and in Huntsville, Alabama and um, in and, and Oakland, California. So we are very, very aware of the uh, need for this particular um, um, you know, disparity in our community. And we're doing our best to really solve it through uh, having everybody understand the importance of growing your own food. So we are really gonna be taking this on. Uh, we look for any kind of assistance or volunteers to help make this happen. So if you're in you know, whatever city you're in and you wanna start your own a garden or backyard garden, please contact us and we have the tools and manuals to help make that happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else on the team wanna comment on that. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Um, 
Faux feet commented, we doing the damn thing. <laughs> we have uh, one more question from Kundai. Kundai. Um, how can the regional hubs be economic viable institutions? Well, one of the things that the chairman has laid out in his political report that everybody should um, you know, adopt the Bye Bye Power Campaign and where all the department institutions and economic development uh, institutions should have a hub within the region. So I think Kundai, you're in the Southern region and um, Zenzile is the hub for the Southern region and you should be having uh, Uzi, you should be having uh, uh, all the different uh, economic development institutions of the party within your organization. Uh, and the Black, Buy Black Power uh, report also showed you how to um, you know, connect with other businesses to get them involved in the Buy Black Power and we have the kit that when you join, you get us, um, you know, five buttons. You get um, you get the um, brochure, you get the Bernie Spear newspaper, you get other stickers, so other businesses can also, you know, um, you know, tell other black businesses about the Buy Buy Power campaign to make it spread worldwide. Uh, Deputy Chair. Uhuru, Chair. Uhuru. I just like to make this contribution to this discussion. Um, the question was raised about uh, how to get uh, this process uh, into other communities. And you've already said it over and over again that the primary thing is recruitment. Mm -hmm. And that the way it happens is not through some kind of magic or anything like that. We have to build on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to bring people uh, into political organization. We have to bring them into the Uhuru movement. And uh, this is what will give us the capacity to do it in any community anywhere in the world. Uh, it's going to depend on what we do politically. This is where we talk about uh, that uh, politics is simply economic, uh, concentrated economics. So uh, we want to make this development that's being spoken of occur any place. It means that we have to have the political will to do it. That means that we have to build organization, recruit people into the process. And that's, that's what will make it happen. That's the only way that it can happen. We don't have enough forces uh, to be anywhere to just go out and do everything that needs to be done. Uh, but there's, there's a potential for making it happen anywhere in the world. And that relies on us bringing masses of people uh, in, our, in the various communities where we're located into political life through the, uh, the Uhuru movement and the projects that we're talking about now. So that's really the answer. I mean, there is no yeah. easy way for this to happen we're going to have to do it which means that uh, politically we got to win people uh, to unite with this and come on board and we the, the thing about this that's so magnificent what we've seen up to now is that there's a practical we've seen that it's practically possible to do it so it's no it's not imaginary here's here's what it looks like mm -hmm. and and that's one of the key things that people need people know uh, africans know we're oppressed Africans know we don't have certain uh, kinds of resources. They know of food deserts and things like that. So what we have, what has to happen is we have to show them practically how it can change. And this is what we are doing with this plenary and with the rest of the projects we do. So it's not what we say, is it? It's what we, it's what we and do. We, and we show the people this. Hugh P. Newton used to say that the people learn through participation. Uh, 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 and that's fundamentally true in observation. So they have an opportunity to see it and they can participate in it and they can engage in changing the world and that makes it theirs. Mm -hmm. And that's what has to happen anywhere we are located. Uhuru. I just wanted to make that comment. I think it's really important. Yeah, I think, thank you, Chairman, for the intervention. And I think too that people, you know, like when they see the Uhuru house and, you know, they see it when they come in, but they don't actually see what it took to make it happen. You know, it just didn't magically happen. It was, it took a lot of, uh, sweat, blood, and tears to make that, you know, make all the economic work happens uh, from the ground up. So everything that you see here, you know, started at its infinite, you know, and then it builds as, you know, as we grew um, people to come in to help, you know, we grew the, uh, the grants team, we just grew everything, you know, and it takes a lot of hard work. When I first came to St. Louis, Man, we didn't have no bathroom. We didn't have no lights. We didn't have no water. We didn't have no, you know, I was peeing in a cup. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it was like, Zanzilla, you can, you can uh, test. You were a cup. You had to go pee. 
<laughs> it was, and, and because of safety, no, it was a real thing. And, and comrades really should take it in consideration. That's what part of building is. You don't have all the luxuries that you need right at hand. You don't have a whole team of people to put forth the work that you need right there. You have to learn it and put the skills and put the work in. We had to pee with no bathroom, had to see with no lights, and we had to make it happen. And we could walk down the street and go use the bathroom because we the poor worker hat class. Ain't no damn bathroom down the street. We had to make it happen no matter what it took. And deputy chair was the leadership over that project. And that's why we have to be great at what we do. Uhuru. Uhuru. <clears throat> I would just like to add, if I may, that, you know, a lot of times you have people don't see what it took to get us where we are. But I can't tell you how many times people have come up to me while I've been working in that garden, while I've been shoveling snow and say, I'm so glad y'all stayed. I'm so glad y'all stayed here and helped revitalize this community. I'm to then start helping me to, you know, do stuff. What can I do, brother? Helping me to pick up trash and stuff. So those people in that community, they know that we sincere. They appreciate us. They appreciate our struggle. And we just have to go in and pull them in. Sometimes they don't think that they good enough to get involved. They don't think that they have knowledge or the skills or the ability to do what we do. We have to take on that leadership. Like the chairman just said, we have to recruit, 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 and do our best to bring them in. Uhuru. I think it's also important to say, uh, uh, even peeing in the cup uh, took organization to get there to pee in the cup. I mean, it wasn't like uh, she could have peed in that cup there uh, when she was in St. Petersburg, Florida. It, it took organization, and that's a critical thing that we have to understand. We're going to have to fight for it. Nobody's going to give it to us. We're going to have to fight for it, organize, organize, organize. Mm -hmm. And that we're going to have to have a, a, a worldview. Uh, that helps us to understand that we're winning. Every every uh, 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 plant, every collard green that's planted uh, uh, across the street from New Horror House is a victory. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that, that flagpole is victory. We're winning. They've done everything they can to crush the spirit, uh, uh, destroy the organization, the will of the people to struggle, and the people have the will to struggle uh, is concentrated in the African People's Socialist Party. And uh, we bring in organization to people, we bring in philosophy to the people, uh, so that organization means something that's going to forward uh, the struggle for our emancipation as a people everywhere on the planet Earth. Right there in St. Louis, we're connecting people in North St. Louis, right there in North St. Louis, and, and the most oppressed sector of the African population, with Africans who are in Sierra Leone and Africans who are uh, in occupied Zania or South Africa, all around the world, we're bringing our people back together through this process. It's raising the consciousness, the confidence. And, and what I would say, um, and I was thinking about saying all along is that uh, what we're doing is showing the capacity of the African working class that's been so slandered, so beaten down and and uh, 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 you know, forced to uh, consider itself inadequate, incapable, inept, uh, uncivilized, uh, uncultured, and what have you. This, this working class, we can see what this working class can do. Uh, the evidence is in this report that we just got. Here is an African working class. What the party has done is allow for people <clears throat> who, who colonialism, the colonial mode of production, has thrown into the trash heap. They say that you're nothing, you can do nothing, and now they're running institutions. I mean, you know, they're sometimes coming out of prison and running institutions that we're not supposed to be able to do it. But the party recognizes the genius of the mass of African people, and we're going to fight to unleash it. That's what's happening here, and that's what's going to have to happen in all those places that we're talking about. We want to take these programs, we unleash the genius of the people, we bring them into organization. That's what being the advanced attachment means. That's also what it means the party uh, to see the party uh, and, and our members as representing the general staff, the general staff of the African Revolution. We are the staff. When Abdul is out there making this work, that's part of what he's doing, whether he intended it or not, is being a concrete example uh, to the class of what our, our, our ability uh, uh, is. And then we bring the skills and other things to this process we function as the staff for the entire African Revolution. That's what the party does. Vanguard up. Vanguard up. Right up. Uh, and uh, I just want to say, too, that we have two more new donors. And I don't know if we have the capacity to put up the uh, how much we've raised so far. 
Uh, one of the donors is Donna. Uh, she uh, donated $50. And then Leah, everybody know Conrad, Leah, she donated another $500. Okay. So we're at a total of $165,711, Conrad. So we're trying to get the 70,000, 170,000 before the end of the plenary on tomorrow. So please go to APSPOhura.org and make your donation. APSPOhura.org and make your donation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Deputy Chair. Uhura. I just wanted to ask, is it okay? I don't know who's reading the comments. Um, Raya sent the comment. I just wanted to make sure that it was read. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I mean, they're a host, so. Yeah, I yeah, was asking the host. host. I was asking the host. <laughs> yeah, we got all the comments. I'm going to just read them out. Okay, okay. My bad, my bad. Let me back off. Oh, you good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so Comrade Raya did comment, comment um, salute to the office of the Deputy Chair Onazane Ashtela, profound work on all the epic reports. It is of the greatest honor to be part of the ODC under the leadership of the Vanguard APSP. We are winning. Reparations now. The people are everything. Victory is now. Recruit, recruit, recruit. Join, <laughs> join, join. Uhuru. <laughs> that was that comment. I see why you wanted me to read it. <laughs> Uh, comrade Mike commented, ODC is doing the damn thing, Uhuru. We got a comment from Malcolm X Center, WMXP Radio 95.5, Uhuru, 1000, congrats. And we um, actually have a couple more questions. So there's one question from user Trey's Mark. Is there plans for more Uhuru furniture and collectible storefronts opening up in other cities? Well, we want to open one in St. Louis, Missouri. That's the next location that I think that needs to happen. Yes, so there are um, uh, plans to, because we want to produce um, all the entities that we have in every city that we're located in. So St. Louis would be the most obvious place for us right now to look at to produce horror furniture and collectibles. I see you over there, Janine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we got another comment from John John Shaw. Um, is there anything in place to protect what you build? Can he say a little bit more? Um, um, we, if, if you know, we, um, part of our institutions um, is um, nonprofit uh, nonprofit organization, the African People Education and Defense Fund, and also. Um, the chairman created uh, a BSI Black Star Industries as the umbrella uh, where we house all of our uh, other economic institutions on the one umbrella. So if I think, I don't know if that's what he means about protection or does he mean something else? Uhuru, well, what he's done is push into the political arena again uh, because the protection for the institutions of the people and uh, the people have to be won uh, to understand what the hell you know, these institutions mean. Uh, they have to become a part of it. That's part of uh, the motive for some of the ways in which uh, the office of the deputy chair is moving forward, coming out of this plenary. Uh, we have to do everything possible to bring the people into uh, a, a, an immediate relationship uh, to these institutions. The fact is that the state has has actively moved uh, on projects uh, such as such as what we're trying to do now, such as what we're doing. Uh, every time uh, there uh, looks like there's an element of, uh, of economic self-sufficiency, economic self-reliance, anything that negates the power and the influence of the colonialism, that's why the US government attacked Venezuela. That's why the United States government attacked Iran. That's why the United States government is bombing and killing people in Afghanistan because they're achieving levels of self of, uh, of self-reliance and self-determination. And so what has to happen is uh, uh, we are gonna be concentrating in a very serious way. Part of the spring explosion, as quiet as it's kept, uh, is going to have to mean mobilizing winning members of the party uh, and the masses of the people to a more intimate, uh, direct, uh, even indirect relationship to these institutions. People in, in who live, uh, for example, in Houston, Texas, while they might not have access to Uhuru, uh, 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 to the One Africa, uh, to the, to the, to the, to the uh, uh, Black Power Blueprint Project in St. Louis, they got a stake in it. 
Masses of working people need to recognize they have a stake in it. Africans who are in the townships in South Africa need to know there's a stake in this. This is ours, and there needs to be one politically among Africans everywhere, so that the stance will be that uh, no matter what you do, you cannot touch those projects. If you touch those projects, we will, we will deliver a consequence. We have to have that ability. That's a political question that we have to take care of everything else we're doing. Otherwise, there is no security for the economic work. Yeah, so, <laughs> the people. Uh, yeah. can I just say in 1996, uh, when uh, the St. Peter Petersburg Police Department murdered Tyrone Lewis, you know, and um, they attacked the Uhura movement, they attacked the Uhura house, and they were they were met with real force against the people. The people kept that that building from being burnt down because they knew what it meant for the community. So I unite, Chairman. The, the people shot a helicopter down, police yeah. helicopter. Yeah. I mean, so the thing <laughs> is, uh, uh, once once the people are won to unity with this, that's our protection. Mm. And I'm hoping that says something to everybody in terms of you know, what our task is. You know, it's not gonna be, you know, just we walk through here and we just grow our food and have our little nice, uh, uh, comfortable things because, you know, we are so smart and industrious. <laughs> now this government uh, has determined, and the system, it's a colonial mode of production. It presupposes an absolute uh, need for a relationship uh, where the colonizer is always extracting value from the colonized. And for that to happen, the colonized uh, have, has to always be in a state of dependency. So when you start breaking out of that, you shake up things in a very serious ways. And that's why there's this unending wars that's going on around the world today. They're trying to protect this relationship, this colonial relationship where the colonized people of the world stay on our bellies at their feet, at their beck and call, because if they can control your food, clothing, housing, uh, and things like that, they can control you. They control your politicians. They, co they control your chicken eating preachers. They control everybody that presupposes to be providing some kind of leadership. Uh, so we have to take this. The people are the key to everything, but for the people to be unleashed, they have to be, achieve political education and they have to achieve organization. That's our job. Uhuru. 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 We have a comment from uh, Comrade Director Akile. She says, the people protected us in 90, 1996 when the state tried to crush our movement and the people have come out in droves to support the party and her movement in any instance of colonial pushback. That's mm -hmm. evident in our accomplishments despite things like the colonial virus COVID-19. That's the people supporting these institutions because of what we mean to the communities we're located in and to the bigger picture. Salute ODC and the practical implementation of dual and contending power. That's what happened in Oakland. When, when, when this brother uh, Lavelle Mixon shot yeah. these four uh, uh, military forces that they call the police in our community, killed them. Mm -hmm. And because we came out and supported him like the rest of the African community in Oakland came out, then there are these white nationalists who actually tried to boycott uh, Uhuru uh, uh, furniture there. And we just pushed back around that. They, could, they were unsuccessful because we won the mass of people to support these institutions. That's where our security, they tried to shut us down uh, right there in Oakland. But the security is in the masses, in the people. That's what we have to win all the time. That's the work we're doing all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that Comrade Director Keeley, you know, raised this up about what happened in 96, but it's happened in other instances when they've come together. Uhuru. We have one more donation from Comrade Johnny X. He gave $50. So we are at 165761 we have <laughs> we have a question from the security of the people the people securing us that has happened so many times at our events uh president columba i Antoinette would tell you that that they have come around these street walkers and these brothers these in these gangs and stuff until we got y'all you know, they'll watch our people coming and going to our porch events and different other events. So, because they know that we sincere and they see the work that we're doing. So, Uru, the security, as the chairman said, is invested in the people. That's why this 50 year anniversary is so important, too. Because what the bourgeoisie, the colonial powers have done is, is hide the existence of our party and the Uhuru movement. 
uh, they've um, they've made it almost impossible for us to penetrate this this uh, what do you call it that that how they've uh, put this uh, uh, this this encirclement, if you will, this information barrier around us, and people need to know who we are, and uh, and that and they know that they know that if the people know where we are and who we are, that it's a new ball game. That's why we're struggling all the time to break out of this encirclement. Uh, we will win. We are winning. There's no doubt about that. I mean, that's why I was in Oxford in 2019. We're breaking out. And uh, more and more people are discovering African internationalism. We, and more people are discovering because we're on the ground in St. Louis and other places, changing the ground under their feet. That's, that's critical. Mm -hmm. And thank you, comrades. Uhuru. Uhuru, we have a question from comrade Wendy Craig. Are we able to purchase products from all the businesses at 60% similar to Spears or Burning Spear Media starter kits so we can get the products in our cities and sell some type of wholesale purchase? Um, I don't know of any of our institutions, I think outside of Decolonnais Hair and Body that might offer that, but the other institutions uh, do not offer a discount or anything like that to sell in bulk. And then we have a couple more uh, comments, a uh, comment from Johan, the feared African working class taking power. They built the entire US economy under the colonial gun. The will, they will build African nation. Uhuru to the chairman and deputy chair, unity through reparations, Uhuru. 